Well, we know it's only been a, a little bit of PPL today, you know, almost three hours for the first set. But, of course, yeah, wow. we have more coming for you. Six games out of that one, most of them going 4-3. And now we're going to go up into a very interesting one. Virtus Pros, you see behind me, are going to be taking on Kanga. They haven't gotten to play yet this phase. And, naturally, we have to bring in resident Kanga expert Nick Kio. <laughs> Pretty hair. I should have brought my jersey today. <laughs> Gonna should be have brought sitting it. By to, to take us through this one. Yeah, man, we had the the or the quickest uh, seven game set yesterday, and then arguably one of the longest six game sets yeah. just now. Uh, but sometimes that's just the way it goes, man. The, these games can drag out a little bit longer if these teams are super, super close to competing. And it's good to see the Knights, you know, swinging right up there with Envy. This is truly feels like a league where you really don't know who's going to win uh, oh, yeah. and who's going to lose. Kanga can be kind of volatile, like who shows up on the day, whether or not they get a great performance or kind of a subpar performance. I feel it's usually one or the other two. I don't really feel like it's very middle of the road, just like boring. It's either like I'm like, wow, there they are, or like – Dang, I'm very underwhelmed right now. Where are they? <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely been uh, polarizing, I guess, is the best way to sure. word it for them. And looking more actually into Kanga, this is an interesting set for them because they've won against VP all year. Granted, all year is first split, not necessarily coming into this one. And you can kind of see them peeking out in the back there. But Chronix is maybe where my eyes are going to fall down just because – between him, I'm looking at him in a raise. I'm looking at where exactly the, these these matchups are going to be. But you also have to encompass and, and deal with... The birthday boy. The birthday boy. <laughs> Just a couple of days belated and uh, performing, obviously, a very important role for the Kanga squad in the point front line. They've really evolved. First phase, super important for the off tanks to be able to play everything. But I kind of start to... F I'm starting to feel a shift in the wins the off tanks aren't seeing quite as much prioritization in the draft. And I'm actually finding myself talking more and more about the point frontliners, what they are doing to stay involved and get themselves in the conversation, whether that's, you know, a little bit of jealousy and all the attention the off tanks have been getting. But Joel performing at a pretty high level for a while for Kenga. He's done a lot of different roles for them, but it seems like point frontline is where he's going to settle. And he's one of those, like, you know, lazy point frontliners where he used to be the DPS, so he has like yeah. those great mechanics. He's got great aim. It's just that, you know, decision making and, and maturity that he might lack a little bit of when you compare him to lazy, who's, you know, much older, much you know, more settled in the role, I think. Yeah, and honestly, when you look at it right now, hearkening on specifically on the DPS past, it's almost perfect right now when you, you have to take in Barrick, who has been phenomenal in yeah. terms of his damage. And those shots make a huge difference. I mean, we were mentioning in Nara, like, when you start to compare the individual numbers, almost all of the tanks hit about the same. I think Atlas is the only one that hits yeah. kind of far above Big and base. beyond everybody else. But, you know, Makoa, 650. Inara is going to be around 675 yep. if you hit all three. Barracks in the, the same ballpark where it's just, as long as you're hitting those, makes the biggest difference. They love their Barrack, and Joel's tends to make it work and will hit that 90k mark. That's right, man. This is uh, a Kenga team that I'm really, obviously, looking for a lot out of. But Virtus Pro yeah. have been so good as of late. And it's it's partially due, I think, just the way they're picking, right? This is a little bit of a Willow meta right now. She's really, really highly prioritized. They have an incredible blaster player. Talking about who knows what with a raise right there. But Fasheko piloting all types of stuff. Drogos is Eevees, Willows. A lot of crazy stuff that he needs to bring to the table on a daily basis. But to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Joel, one of the more veteran point frontliners in the scene, and one of the more veteran guys on Virtus Pro and of Paladins in general, since day one, Doseps has been competing. Since Young Shopping Sweden, before you and I were even a part <laughs> of this scene, man, he was there. He was on stage holding it to him. Granted, back then, I think he was playing a little bit more Cassie, but you never know. What could hold? The triple DPS, quad DPS. I expect to see Dosa right. come through and play the Cassie. But, I mean, yeah, like you said, toe-to-toe -to -toe with Joel's, which is always the interesting thing. Kanga, as far as I know, whenever, like, when they quote-unquote checked in, right, when they, they submitted their roster, Joel's is listed as, I believe, their flex, but he's almost always their really? point tank. And so it's always interesting to see it. But, I mean, Nara has been huge for yeah. Dosa's in these last few months Definitely. and last few weeks specifically. And his presence on the point 
is what I think allows Arrays and Fischeko to just go do whatever they want because they don't have to worry about him. They don't need to give him help. He does it all himself. Yeah, man. Barrick is going to be really, really, a, I think, a hot commodity in this set in particular. Virtus Pro do very well with it. Kanga do very well with it. The damage amp is very good for that character as well, whether it's Genos. VP obviously leaning a lot heavier into Furia these days. And Kanga, where they go on the, on the supports, is it's actually kind of a conversation now. I mean, with so much Furia being picked up, Genos really kind of looking lackluster for SSG. I don't know if that's a yeah. Genos thing or if that's just an SSG thing, though, Gore, to be honest. So I'm not ready to pin it on either column, one. A column, Maybe a little bit of both, <laughs> for sure. Uh, but what Kanga like to pick from the support, obviously they've got a very veteran support. They can run a lot of different stuff. Uh, these times are all about what are you doing different than everybody else? Yeah. And Kanga really needs to show us something here, what they want to get going and what they want to innovate on. It feels weird because like, we, ne we never really get to highlight the supports, but this is one of those matchups where it really could be anybody and everybody coming down. Vex, Gera, you could ban four supports and like it'd be interesting if we were in a different meta mm -hmm. to see what kind of things we're getting uh, I want to say shift it around, right? If you're like, you have to ban Maldamba, Genos, Furia, insert some other support here, and you have right. to force them into like Vex playing Grok support and versus Terra yeah. playing Pip support. Like, that's the kind of stuff I'd love to be able to see out of those two. Yeah, Just because they do have those deep pockets. The supports have very rarely been the focus uh, of the meta. If anything, Genos has been a consistent ban at points in his life cycle. Honestly... Way, way back in the day, I feel like Saris used to be decently prioritized when uh, her ultimate would go off super, super snappy. And, and I think there is, I think Saris is just out of viability even. I think some some tuning to her ultimates maybe, you know, players have suggested if it could stick to walls and activate off of that. Yeah. Something like that. Something to make that ultimate a little bit more consistent. And she might be right up there too, but that's been part of the problem is that there's so many supports that are viable that it's almost like a futile strategy to ban them out. Only yeah. only if you're up against a team, and I know Cuss used to do this because he plays all types of supports. If he was up against a support that didn't have the deep pockets or the versatility, that's when you would start to see the Maldamba ban yeah. and the Genos ban and an early uh, support prioritization from them. But neither of these supports, <laughs> they're too deep to, <laughs> to go head on at. You're letting too many powerful off tanks through at that point. Well, hey, he was just on your screen, and, and we were just talking about Mr. Hayes because he got that double kill on Warder's Gate, and it was a very good shot. But Gara's the guy that has the four-man. Like, he's he got the top play in the PPL period so far, and that's one of those things. Like, him on Genos, I guess, has to be that iconic matchup for me just because of those moments. It's on a map like Frozen Guard, so we don't typically get to see it too often. Yeah. And the question of the day will be whether or not so it's hyped, been dude. banned out as it comes through. Serpent Beach, Split Stone coming in the first wave and then we're gonna have frog isle jag falls so a couple of standards really pulled away bright marsh gonna still be available stone yeah. keep gonna still be available but shaking it up just a little bit yeah maps are maps are not my favorite part of the draft phase right i i usually like to kind of gloss over them but the map picks and then what champions starting to conjecture about that type of stuff is fun and just a capstone that that thought on, on Gara's time and space like not only was that the sickest in terms of just the quantity of players fragged but it was like the weight of that match that was oh, a yeah. one versus a two match of a fanatic versus a navi back when you know fanatic was king and that wins the game wins that's you know that series it was just it, everything about it was just perfect and impactful it's everything you wanted but Unfortunately, right now. Well, I guess not unfortunately. We're still going to be seeing an interesting matchup overall. It's fourth versus six, not one versus two. We got that one yesterday. But admittedly, with where Virtus Pro are, fourth is maybe misleading. We're going to start things off on Bright Marsh for them. And this, I mean, much like Jaguar Falls, which Kanga banned out this time around, anything could really happen here. Young Spud sitting down with Mr. K Crunchy, one of the newer members of VP, but one that has quickly stepped up. You know, he's been around for a while, so a decent amount of experience and just comfort playing the game, right? What he plays, how he plays, and being able to kind of IGL for a, for a team, you have to say it's been yep. a pretty impactful addition as well as Erase, well-spoken, very dialed in on that backline DPS, always performing, never really much of a feeder. You are not welcome here! So... I'm going to ask you this Look now. Did you like seeing Willow for a few weeks? It feels like she's going to be disappearing. Yesterday, yeah. like there were a few bans for her. Today, she's been played once out of the six games we've seen. And uh, 
I feel like we've got our new four stack band down at the bottom. Yeah, she's she's kind of like flying bomb king for me a little bit. Like where all she really does uh, is kind of you know, well, dead zone's pretty impactful, and I think that can be integrated into your core rotation. But you're pretty much left clicking, and all of your damage comes from the left click. So your gameplay loop is simple. Your loadout is pretty simple, centered around stats. The items you're purchasing are pretty simple, centered it's around the stats, like just it. keeping I you alive as long as possible to continue to left click and do your job doing they more damage. Bit of an interesting me. draft <laughs> shaping up, though. Uh, standard off tank bands. As we will see the little switch up. Still a little, still kind of interesting, I think. Taking away the Furia from VP is a big thing, but the first pick of Nara speaks volumes because I was really, really kind of having my eye on Barrick yeah. for both of these teams and because of the flexibility that Barrick brings as a frontliner. You can transition to so many different compositions with him. I mean, VP lately, I actually think the Furia draft is incredible from King because lately they have been very heavy on the Nara furia combo. It was, I mean, even yesterday, SSG at one point banned the Furia to try and make it a little more difficult for Vex. But again, one of the things we've mentioned for these supports is that, well, they always seem to have another one in their back pocket. So they grab themselves yeah. a Khan, they grab yeah. themselves a Ying, and that's going to be a pretty tanky lineup to burn through. Maeve's still a pretty impactful pick on the board, but... There's this element of picking your DPS too early. It leaves you a bit vulnerable because it really gives away what you're trying to do, how you're trying to win, and, and, and being countered much more heavily. In terms of front lines being countered, I don't feel like, you know, you have your Ruckus Cassie conversations. You have, you know, certain things like Khan can overpower uh, a little L Ash out of her ultimate and a couple of things like that. But overall, people really like to get those DPS online later to get a more full view of what their opponents have. As both are locked in here for Kanga, Evie, Cassie. I, I'm getting the just a just a hunch that they're really focusing on picking away from VP more than themselves. And that's that can be a yep. dangerous road to go down. It's weird because at the same time, like it feels good for them. It Everybody can play well, yeah. all of those characters, absolutely. But it does, it also feels very much like the trying to pull the carpet out from under yeah. VP and not realizing that they're also standing on said carpet that they're trying to yank away. So <laughs> tripping themselves up in the process. And I wonder if, you know, I mean, we saw that little Fernando kind of hover dance around earlier. I'm wondering if maybe they could still lock that in. I mean, he's immortal, known for countering mm. Dragon Punch. Still been prominent, but I mean, with someone like Ash available, you're kind of reaching down further than you need to. Well, we got to have this conversation a little bit yesterday with Shaolin. Given all the ruckus that was being picked up, Shaolin has implanted one of the highest single target DPS abilities in the game. And when you just put a big old target in front of him, that's not difficult for a player like Arrays to hit. He's going to plug away with all of those arrows. Yeah. But also in that conversation, I really made sure to bring up Explosive Arrow was something that was brought out in counter to Eevee. When Eevee was running rampant and Leon was really the only answer, if a team would either ban or get both, people were starting to look at Shaolin as a way to do it. Explosive Arrow can put you in kill range to just hit the Explosive Arrow and then one quick follow-up shot from Planted will do the trick. So it is a very, very high burst uh, window and you know hitting that one-two type of punch it's, it's tough, but not as difficult as obviously tracking a full planted and just trying to use that as your sole answer to Eevee. So this is one of those moments, and and if Leon, who's being hovered right now by Kanga, gets locked in here, this will be one of the first, or one of the few times, maybe not one of the first times, but not only not seeing Ash, period, but Kanga have loved Ash, like mm -hmm. all split, all year, really. Yeah. That has been one of in the ones, game, like, I mean, th she will even be first die. picked. There is and no now for well, one of the few times, potentially, that she's just going to be forgotten as they go for the triple DPS. How do you feel about that kind of switch? Do you think that's good against what VP brought? You know, Bar Barrick bring... Uh Barrick brings that flexibility. I, you know, I think they have a decent answer for everyone. They're going to have enough record to get through Con Shield. They are going to have uh, enough big game, just raw damage to yeah. beat through Nara. It's about outplaying Fasheko and Arrays right now. Normally, Kanga doesn't do so hot without Rhino commanding the front line. We'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm absolutely open to it, though. Well, the drafts are in. The map is locked. Let's go ahead and jump down to Dave and Kresnik to tell us their thoughts before we get into game one. Be careful on your jump down here, Gormizer. It's a long way to the caster booth. 
Dolson and Kresnik, as he so eloquently pointed out. Virtus Pro and Kanga, it's a fun one. But triple yeah. DPS for Kanga going up against Virtus Pro, playing like the best team in this league. You got to pick and choose your battles carefully. I'm, o I'm on Nick's side on this one, I think. I'm open to it. But it's a team that you really got to be careful about taking, you know, one step too far forward. Sure, it's definitely Kanga's MO recently too, right? Yeah. They've done the triple DPS, triple tank kind of all over the place. And it, it did guide them to a win against NIP. So I, I get why I yeah, think that's they want to shift back to their standard more. But I don't know, man. VP, that draft looks <laughs> really solid. I, I find it interesting that they left the Leon open. I feel like it might have been a bait. I feel like right. they have something in mind for the Shaolin in particular. But... Yeah. Honestly, I'm not sure what quite yet. I, I don't know why it would be the preference over that. Maybe just more counter flank pressure to the EV, but it really, I don't know. It, it, it's kind of just equal to the Leon, I think, in counter flank pressure. Believe, unless it was, was swapped since uh, the beginning. At least on the talent screen, it was Fuselage Drogos, unless he uh, swapped it afterwards. He has a double kill already, Fuselage, so for sure. I guess I'll take it. Uh, make it oh. three for okay. Pacheco. You don't get to see Fuselaz too, off, or too often, excuse me. What do you do? It'll snag you three kills. Yeah, Fuselaz is a really powerful legend. It used to be really crazy. I remember like, wait, when I started playing, it was just like an insane amount of bonus damage. It's still good, but it keep, people kind of put it to the wayside under the others. But I guess with Leon in the game yeah. and with the pressure from the Eevee, I don't think he wants combustible. I, I get it. You know, right. He wants to be able to get that burst damage on the targets coming into him. And when you're Fishiko, and you're just not missing your directs, what's the downside? Yeah, I guess there's not much. He already has another one in this one. Joel's next to go down at the hands of Vex, but most of that damage coming from Fischeko. God, so much cleave damage. Throw another one onto the pile. Vex with a double. Fischeko adds another. Chronix is certainly going to be the next to drop as Dosips runs that one down. 5-1-4 for Fishy. 15k damage. Undying for the rest of VP. Only Joel's has one to pull back, and that was onto Fischeko himself but uh, already forced all the way back into Kanga's base. A really dominant start from VP. Just, I do I do love <laughs> the idea of Fuselot. I think it's really, really solid. And they just, the tank line and sustain from VP are gonna buy them so much time in these engagements. In Nara, Khan, Ying, they can last for such a long time. Hmm. I feel, I mean, Ying brings crazy sustain, and Nara, Khan, their cooldowns without heals can buy them a lot of time, and Ying is just raw heals on top of that, so it does a lot. Looks like VP are going to come up with the Dragon Punch, oh, but they're... just a little bit of a bait, pulling them back. Yeah. They're coming back and re-engage now. They're throwing everything at the wall here, and everything is sticking a double kill for the Shaolin. So much of that set up by the Illusory Rift, Dragon Punch, Heat Haze, everything coming out, nothing for Kanga to hang their hat on. Still overpower, still seismic crash. I don't think they're even going to be able to step out, even contest this one. They're going to get the dismounts. A three-minute first half from Virtus Pro, considering the you know 30 seconds or so that started at the beginning of the game. That was over as, qu uh, as quick as it started. Yeah, I think we've had more setup and drafting time than the game at this point. Yeah, at this, this point. This that crazy oh my. Ah. I don't <laughs> think we got to see that, but that was unreal. Oh, my. Yeah, fish, th this is when you can do this. Cover your you eyes, Kresnik. Always run fuselage. I'm not that young. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, you can almost always run fuselage if you're hitting shots like that consistently. Yeah. I mean, the rest of the team undying, all with a few kills on the board for for each of them. A raise for 0 and 3. Also, wow. only 1400 damage Great. below Fsheko, so he's still doing a lot of pressure. I liked the start. I liked how they kind of put him on the side. He planted right. in the window after Leon had already used some of her cooldown, so they couldn't burst him down immediately. Mm -hmm. That pressure pulled them back and walked them into the Fuselade spam from Fish. They do have fast cap here, but they're going to be at a, a slight item disadvantage. Seismic Crash rolls through to the back line. Kruntzi finds a couple stuns there. Chronix finally getting his name in the kill column as he Plugs a few shots into the back of the Stone Warden here. He raised those, still alive. Chronix, one more shot will do it. Dosips has to choose one. He drops that shield. He does it just then. Skates out within an inch of his life. Kanga, finally some offensive presence from them. They're on the point. Fast cap, likely point number one for them. A little bit unfortunate timing, I think, by Doe. He, he said that, he said that seismic, oh, sorry, it's actually crunchy. He sent that seismic yeah. crash over to the low ground. It didn't really get anything out of it. Sure. It, it stunned four people that just couldn't be seen, and now Staggers himself trying to get that last second touch with his team unable to follow up. Now VP going to sit in their spawn, reset here, get their spawns, and try to find a pick early. Right. Kanga have to be careful. They have to just kind of pull back and make them walk into the grinder. You want to burn them down while VP come in. 
and then you can strike with your right. He only needs that room made by his DPSs for him. And Kanga have a, uh, a lot to work with here. Finding the first kill onto Fasheko. That's a good starting to open that door a little bit. Rhino, abysmal first couple rounds from him. Gets onto the board now with the kill onto Erase. Evil Eye feeling a little bit more comfortable once that dragon's out of the sky. He blinks in, helps find a little bit of damage for his team. And Kanga now rolling just as well as Virtus Pro were rolling. Things are in the opposite direction this time, though. I think Fish has to be a, just a little bit more careful. He's been, I think he's top deathing right now. Yeah. And he needs to pay a bit more attention to the, the space he's trying to take. Fusilod, you, if you're not hitting every direct, I think it does fall off a little bit compared to right. some of the others. And he's hitting a lot of them, but not able to get away with sure. what he's trying to do versus Leon and Cassie, two strong characters, I think, to him, especially right. since he's not in the skybox, you know, eight miles away, and Erase, two quick ones on the right, might sure. let BP get aggressive here. Well, it's high risk, high reward. Erase, a double kill. Virtus Pro back and respawning. Kanga, though, trade out a little bit there, so they're forced back on their own as well. Five ultimates for Virtus Pro in this case. About a minute left on the defensive side of things. Erase starting to come into his own as well here. I mean, so much of our early game analysis was based on, you know, fuselage on the uh, the Drogos. Shaolin, though, that's an important thing to look at. Uh, in certain situations, it definitely makes sense, and Erase is making it look good here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's great against... They just have all this burst damage against the squishy targets. A thousand damage guaranteed every single time Fish or Arrays hit their auto attacks. It's, it's a lot for the DPSs to deal with. It's so tough for them to go through. As soon as one shot gets hit, they're forced out. Right. No way for them to follow up. Yeah, the damage chart still slightly in favor of VP if you consider the two and three spot. Number one, though, going to Chronix, one of the triple DPS players over for Kanga here. Overtime likely to begin here for Sheko on a little bit of a chase. It's Evil Eye wrapping around that back corner. Rhino's the first one to drop down here. That's a big opening for Virtus Pro. Might be able to capitalize. Fasheko starting to hit a few more of those shots from the high ground. The, the risk is that you miss, but the reward is that you get a lot of extra bonus damage. Evil Eye's just kind of setting up a tent in the bottom left-hand corner there. Finally, he's going to blink in, find a couple kills. And while things are looking good for Virtus Pro, they lose their frontliners, they lose their healers. And Kanga tied up. I think neither team used a single ultimate there, too. So both teams kind of tentative. Also, I, find it, I, I was surprised to see the Inara Khan kind of flipped, but I think it makes sense on this map, for middle at least. You want your Inara controlling that apartment side. is, is really lethal. The yep. wall in that area, super strong. And I think Khan isn't the worst contester of the mid right. Being able to chip away at that barrack and kind of having that burst of sustain for if the DPSs decide to focus him. Right. Uh, it does make sense, but... I, I find it kind of interesting that they wouldn't just maybe put Kronzi on point and have sure. Doe play Inara on that side. Doe's been... Four. It's weird to say That's a true, dominant actually. Inara, but One. I feel like Doe has, has been a, a presence every single time he gets that champion. So, find it interesting they switched it up. Works with him in the first rounds, but might have been what caused the falter in the fall. That's, it's very true. I mean, Kanga bring out some some spiciness with a triple DPS, but Virtus Pro kind of on a micro level, wh whether it's talents, whether it's uh, people playing different roles, switching things up as well. Fasheko doesn't connect with the Dragon Punch there. He raised, though, pulls this one back for Virtus Pro. A double kill with the Shaolin. Evil Eye still alive, finds a double kill for himself on a Cruncy. Heat Haze burning away for the Shaolin here. Through the Ice Storm he goes. One more shot on the Evil Eye will do it. Dosups finds it. In a fight of three double kills, Dosups rounds this one out. And Virtus Pro end up on top. And they're fighting from the point. Raises play with my heart with those misses at the very end. The Evil Eye almost clutched it out, basically, yeah. in the end with all the low HP on Virtus Pro after he found the kill onto Vex, but unfortunately not able to find it. Fasheko going down first again. He's got to be more careful. Forces VP off the point, so now Kanga will get this slow little bit of retake. Not a lot of point capture, yep. though. Means they can, they're going to have to play it slow and not let VP find the burst damage onto their squishies. They still have Dome Shield, still have Enlightenment, so something to work with, but burst damage from Eray is a little bit too much for Chronix to deal with. They get a double. Every single one of these fights, Erase at least has one. More often than not, it's been two. This fight is no exception. Read down now for Kanga, and at 63%, it's going to be a tough retake. Evil Eye will be able to blink in and get a touch, unless he loses this engagement right out. 84% now for Virtus Pro, still controlling that middle section. Respawning back in basis. Barrick Fischeko just waiting for the blink back. He predicts it. He finds it. And Virtus Pro well on their way to their third point. Very smart by Fish to just focus on Evoli with the picks that they got in mid. 
he was the only one who had even a remote chance to yep. touch. So keep your eyes there. Even though it looks kind of weird with everything else happening, he's the priority, 100%. So good comms by, by VP. And now they're shoving really hard into this tree side, kind of focusing down the barret, because if they get that initial tank out of the way, things are going to be a lot easier. Impaler missed by a raise. So they kite back and three quick ones. Four oh, no. for Kanga. Rhino with three as they retake this. Yeah, well played by Kanga to come right back into this fight. Things were looking dire just for a moment. So much of it has stemmed from Fasheko dying off first in some of these engagements. Towards the end of that mid fight, he was able to stay alive, buy a little bit of time for his team, add an extra kill there. But but so often we've seen in this game, he just dies first and Virtus Pro, that, that 4v5 disadvantage is just enough to lose the fight. They don't really have an aggressive comp. Sure. And their DPSs are sometimes playing like it is. I mean, if Fish trades, then I guess it's okay. Right. But, but not one you'd be like relying on a lot of the time. So I think okay. Fish just needs to slow things down a little bit, use that Fusilade spam to not allow Kang to push in. And, and it sucks for them, for sure, because triple DPS, that's kind of the king of the slow pokey right. comp. And it's hard to feel like you're just waiting it out. It's definitely hard to have that patience for how long triple DPS fights can tend to go. And they, they have been drawn out here. This is a, a good defensive stand from Kanga. Just as a reminder, Virtus Pro are trying to push here, but Kanga have drawn the line in the sand back to the Virtus Pro base. There's some direct damage for you. On to Evil Eye, that one goes. Rhino with the accurate shots onto Pacheco, though, able to clean that one up. 50 seconds remaining on this payload push. The War of Attrition stands right around mid map here as Virtus Pro are going to. Try to spearhead their way back to their payload. Five ultimates for Kanga. At this point, you'd be happy to defend without having to use too many. But so often we see these payloads start to move. Maybe Virtus Pro get a clean sweep of a fight. Things really start to tilt in their favor. They need to find some kill pressure here. Fasheko's going to do just that. A nice double kill. Fasheko snipes Kronix with the spit. Not even blowing up the spit. The spit just hits Kronix and see that falls very over. You really don't see that very much. I hope he looked at the kill recap and was like, what? Yeah, wait a second. Oh, that's that's a little that's a little <laughs> out there. But this map, it can be very snowbally. It depends on the timing of some of the deaths. And yeah, Gera smartly diving off the side of the map to get himself reset. He was stuck behind, and he need they need to be able to contest the cart at this choke point. Because if it gets closer, once they start having to throw bodies onto the point, there's, there's not much else they can do. Why though? In the back line, yeah, looking it, for some pressure. He caught fish, and again the first one to go down, and that's a lot of pressure gone. Yeah, Rhino just walks on the wall and pressures Vex out. You know, with Vex dropping down, things tilt ever so more in Virtus Pro's favor, but the triple DPS stands tall this time around. That's going to be a good salvo, but not enough frontline presence from Virtus Pro. Going to a point seven. The contested day continues much the same here on Bright Marsh. One more point seven to determine who strikes first. This is VP also on the bottom of their checklist. You know, they're yeah, going true. down who they want to be taken down there. Their kill bill. <laughs> Kanga's built. Right. I mean, they're there. They're right at the end, but they got to be able to close it out and not be a little over aggressive. Fishiko, 11 deaths. I mean, Rhino also has 13 on their team, but it's been one or the other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It really, really has been both back and forth. And it makes sense, you know, they kind of counter each other. Leon, right. Well, Leon counters Drogos. Fishiko maybe counters Rhino just with the mechanical skill there. Kanga do have the top of the damage charts, though. Yeah. They have the inflame boost, is helping them a lot. Evil Eye and Chronix up there. Ray's also in the middle of it too, and I think Fish's deaths have kind of pulled him very far down, but he just needs to be a little more patient, yep. not rush things, make them walk into you. That's what you have to do with Fusil. Who swings first is my question. Scout for Kanga was used. They're fighting from the point here. Seismic Crash drops down, overpower, goes just wide for Virtus Pro, but everything is getting thrown at the wall here. Illusory Rift is going to get used as well, but the end flame from Kanga is going to try to answer it out. Neither team with any kills. Dome Shield might be able to buy him a little bit of space. Evil Eye blinks in, finds the kill on Tui Rays. That's the first blood in this final fight. Gera adds one onto Cruncy as well, and Evil Eye finds the angle right into the back of Dosips. He goes. Kanga are controlling this fight. A double kill from Rhino may have just sealed the game. And I don't think there's any chance they have to go in. I mean, their tanks aren't super mobile. It's not like they have an Ash dash into a Sir Dominant something. A Raze blocked with the Ice Storm and taken down immediately. Cruncy getting slowed down as well. So Let's VP, VP have no chance. Kanga end up taking the first map, and VP, they got it. They gotta stop being cute. Fusilade was cool. I liked the concept, but Fish just wasn't ready to use it, man. He yeah. He's not ready. What, uh, I mean, it, it seemed to have worked right off the bat. Maybe that's just kind of a one off where he was in the perfect spot to find himself a triple kill and not necessarily indicative of how that was going to work for the rest of the game. Is it just too situational of a talent to run? 
I think that was the situation for it. I just don't think right. Fish was ready to play it. And since they couldn't close it out immediately, Triple DPS does scale better in the late game. That's true. They don't have that caught in record kind of down. Caught partially, but they <laughs> right. don't have that record downside. So later the game went on, Kanga had the advantage. I heard the uh, the New York accent squeak by oh, on no. caught there a little bit. Just a little bit, I heard it. Game one, though, goes the way of Kanga. Virtus Pro looking to bounce back right after this. Steel Series, the official peripheral provider of the Paladins Premier League. Well, Kanga do the do exactly what they needed to be able to find themselves up 1-0 in the set. Although it was a lot closer, I think, than, than just that can really merit. It was a 4-3 back and forth. A lot of good moments from Virtus Pro early on that yeah. kind of tapered off as time went on. I, that certainly looked like it was going to be a 4-0 after the first team fight, man. The way those rockets were connecting, still a big problem, but... At the end of the day, man, it's it's very execution based. I think Fish did a really yeah. good job on making Fusilod work. You either miss or you hit, and you hit hard. But all these characters pretty slippery, you know, pretty thin, you know, f decent mobility. When you look at uh, the Evil Eye matchup with uh, Fish, actually, I feel like did a decent job of handling that. Yeah. But it takes a lot of time. You know, how many how many times did we see Fish just spamming a wormhole location waiting for Evil Eye to come back? It it's either blink back or you know stay yeah. in what presumably is a worse or a laugh position. at you as you try and yeah. think you have me read. But either way, I mean, 13, 7, 10 there for our raise. 13, 12, and 8 for Fish Echo. Started off really, really well and then kind of tapered off as time went on. And then the slash lines for Kanga, I mean, they're not impressive. In fact, they're pretty much in the same vein. 10 and 7, 10 and 7. Rhino was 11, 13, and 9, but he still was able to have such a huge impact this game. A lot of kills as the off-tank player. And the reason I wanted to kind of highlight him is because we don't see this super often from Kanga. Not, not a ton of people are playing 3 DPS very consistently anyway, but when it's time to step up to the plate, it's like the couple of off tanks that are still doing it are just so impressive, man. It's like they play a lot of Cassie Leon, which are simpler characters, but when it comes down to it, he's still got to get in there. He still has to hit the shot and know his matchups. And for the off tank to do it, when we talk about how many characters they already have to know how oh, to yeah. play and have to have mastery matchups on, for him to be able to swap to this and get them the win in a draft that I kind of felt like was just very focused on taking things from Virtus Pro rather yeah. than building that that package. And it wasn't until the final DPS was locked in that you, you kind of, I started to see the light, obviously. You know, they took away the Furia, they got their Barrack. All of this stuff makes sense with the damage amp. But then you got to get in there and, and you got to outplay Virtus Pro, which is very hard to do as of late. That's exactly what well, Kanga figured out how to do. The question is whether or not they can keep it up. And it's such a weird thing to see any team right now, in my mind, that's not Envy choosing to go to Fish Market. But Kanga usually have been opting for this as of late. Mm. And so it's not too surprising to see it come up, although I will say it's a little earlier than I expected at Fish Market. Definitely, man. Uh, I think Envy are the only team that comes to the top of my head uh, that are picking fish market and, and like and, using yeah, that as, as that's an ace in the hole for them. If it, ace in the hole is not even really like a, the right word for it, I think, because they're picking it earlier in their sets, and it's really just become an asset for them. Kind of a meme with fish market and Kanga. They they've lost a lot of important games throughout their lifetime on this map. Uh, so for them to go to it early, it, it could be they a, get that loss out of the way. They gotta now. they gotta turn over a new leaf on this map. You know, they want to turn that weakness into a strength. So they take VP's match, or uh, excuse me, map pick, which is probably the hardest part about this set. 
yeah. not getting dumpstered on your opponent's first pick map pick and being able to pick yourself up for your map pick. So they've done the hard part. Now if they can just win their their map pick, which frankly, Gore, this is not a vanilla map pick. This is no, not something a not lot of teams are playing and I imagine practicing a ton on. So if Kanga have something up their sleeve for Fish Market, you, you know, if they're already playing this well, you throw uh, you throw VP off balance any more than they already were in game number one, you're going to be in a good spot up 2-0. The question is whether or not they can kind of keep that again, not only just the historically big matches that Kang have had trouble with on Fish Market, some of the ones that they've chosen Fish Market themselves. I mean, the last time, the one that at least stands out to me was when they picked it against Envy, and it was just like, really? You, you sure you want to do that one? Like, you, you can maybe take it yeah. back. But unfortunately, it was too late for them there. But it opens up so many more picks. I mean, we haven't seen them in a while, so this is going to be kind of negligible. But I mean, flanks that are available on this map can do a little better. Like, I don't mind seeing Koga on this map. Zen, we've seen come through. Strix, Kinesa are available. Leon, Cassie, like, all the DPS that are normally up for grabs, and then some, are all good on Fish Market. Yeah, the conversation right now, it definitely feels like it's revolving around Willow for Virtus Pro. They get their Furia. They get their Strix, which just, we had this conversation all the time. When Eevee was super popular, it was like picking Leon to deter Eevee to get it for yourself in the next round. It's stuff yeah. like that. The mind games you need to play. And Kanga, despite all of that, Eevee still feeling like a good selection, a good matchup for Evil Eye, but I don't, I, I mean, Strix has one of the better matchups against all flankers. I mean, the, the yep. Talon Rifle into the unauthorized use flare for near, all of Eevee's health. I mean, you hit that shot, you hit that flare, Eevee's gone. Yeah. She does, the dot, it doesn't matter. You don't have to hit a single pistol shot to follow it up. You've completed the matchup at that point. It's uh, it's definitely a tough one for Eevee to navigate and it has to be very careful and very aware that a raise is hitting that combo recently. A lot of people are playing a lot more Strix Willow is still open. Kanga don't have any great things to deal with it as of late, but they are still positioned to go for a 3 DPS if they so choose. It's probably the best thing to be able to come through. No, we've seen Cassie. I mean, if you, you want to just take it at face value, Eevee, Cassie, you were mentioning Strix. 1,200 just as a I didn't hit your head, like a, a consolation prize. It's still going to be a majority of either of their health being able to come through. Willow locked in. Banned a lot of today. Finally going to be able to make it through. Fish Market can be a pretty good map for her, but it doesn't seem to be bothering Kanga at all. Smiles all around still as Khan gets locked in. And VP are in the rare instance that they still need a tank at the very end, unless they want to go Khan point tank. Yep. Ash is available. Hasn't been a real conversation. <laughs> yeah, hasn't really been too much priority around her. And part of that in game one, unpicked, unbanned Ash. It looks like Kanga are basically going for the same composition again swapping only the Furia for the Genos. But they're putting Dosups in a spot where, you know, if he needs to be picking Khan, they just circumvent Ash. They don't really play into that counter with the overpower or sort of dominance that we talked about a little bit. Now they have a good, frankly, two good answers for Genos. I don't care what anybody says. In this game, After you've right clicked, you die, why not just no dink Willow for 80 to 100 damage, you know, yep. over time. I, I, think that's, I think it absolutely contributes uh, and especially helping Leon, who's also chip damage based, especially from long range. You're not hitting super hard, but you just have the consistency of being a hit scan. Virtus Pro, do you have to worry about, of course, Cassie, but Ruckus does have a lot of good matchups. He can definitely bulldoze over Genos and Leon before they really have much to say about it. And even Go against ahead. big game, you if you can. get the jump on Cassie and you're landing all of your damage, there's still a good chance you're gonna do just fine in that matchup as well. Yeah, she really needs the first shot to make that one feel more worthwhile there. But yeah, they're going, it looks more like Dosips here for the con. Triple DPS worked for Kanga once. We'll see if it if it works again. Do you have a draft here that, that feels better for Fish Market or are they both kind of on an equal playing field? I... I do like 3 DPS on Fish Market, but I really feel, if you can even call it that, the meta picks right now with the, with the Strix Willow, it feels like they kind of got that a bit unadulterated, and I, I like VPs better. I'll yeah. be honest with you, man. I think this is going to be a hard one to beat, but I said that about Bright Marsh too, and I was already <laughs> proven wrong once. Well, we'll have to see whether or not they can up their execution level here for Virtus Pro, or if Kang are going to be able to take it away. Let's go ahead and jump down into Fish Market.
Appreciate it, fellas. I don't get to watch it in the Envy set, but I do get to watch it in the Kanga Virtus Pro set. A little fish market. Fisheka will be feeling just fine and at home on this map. Name similarities are the only reason that jumps to my mind. Another triple DPS, though, for Kanga this time around. Does it work just the same here in your mind? I mean, Fish Market was one of the best maps for it always. I mean, Fish Market was the quad DPS map for a while. There was a period where NAPPL teams were running Genos and just four DPSs here. Yeah. So it's definitely kind of the home the home turf, I would say, for right. it. VP's draft is very interesting. Three, they, they've two, changed a lot of things up. The, the Strix plus Furia, good once the Inflames up, a lot of kind of defensive play there, but that Ruckus, I have a feeling he's going to have a hard, he's good at dueling the 1v1 yeah. versus the Squishies, but if the Cassie and the Eevee can both look at him at the same time, he's going to struggle to get anything done. I look for E-Raise to uh, kind of pull things back. Those plug shots from the Strix, so painful to the Squishies that Kanga have on their side. You already see three half health bars on their side. Fisheko just a little bit too deep, though. That allows Rhino to strike for first blood. Virtus Pro, though, fighting from the point this time around. That's the luxury they've bought themselves with one extra tank on their lineup, but this is the threat. Once the rest of your team starts getting run down, you're forced back, you're, for, you're forced off the point. Blinking in and blinking out is Evil Eye just to draw that line, making sure they're not able to overextend in this case. Rhino, huge game last time around. They had him flex onto the triple DPS. More the same from him. Same three DPSs from the last game. Now Virtus Pro on the back foot. They're looking to retake here as Kanga Eclipse 70%. I love the surround by Kanga, how they were playing it at the start. Joel's smartly disengaging from the point. Yep. Knows that he can't really afford to stand there. Once they get a little bit of chip damage, I'm sure he's going to walk right back on. Erase, though, kind of moving in directly to counter him. Barricade by Joel's keeps him alive for now, but the onslaught's going to begin pretty soon. Ruckus, actually, Crunzy finding a hold there. Also, Fish diving into the yep. back line again, just a little bit too fast, and both of the aggressive divers from VP go down. Yeah, now it's your year at a three versus five, making a two versus five disadvantage. This certainly spells point number one for Kanga. Nobody in range to, to step on there. Dosups drops to Chronix. Same story as uh, the first sort of engagement in this one where Fasheko goes deep, nearly finds a kill, drops, and then the dominoes fall from there. Kanga making this triple DPS work. And not surprising on this map. Just surprising that VP would think this is the answer. Right. You know, I, I just feel like the Ruckus is, is conceptually good, but on a team that was, I thought, playing pretty well together last map. You kind of need to catch people out of position to make the ruckus right. work, you know. And, and they're, they're clearly trying to force the issue. I mean, we just saw what their game plan is going to be. I also just went New York again. Uh, and I yeah. knew you were going to say it. <laughs> I was going to let why it go. I but myself. I <laughs> uh, we we just saw how it worked, where they sent the ruckus and the willow into the back line to find a kill. Sure. Get raised with a quick one onto Gera as well. There we go. Fast turns for them. Finally, some offensive presence from Virtus Pro. That's sort of where you expect the payload to die out, though, uh, if you're on the defensive end. Rhino at four and one, forced back. Only one death for everyone across the board. Vex is the only one undying in this game so far. Quad DPS, or triple D, almost quad with Barrack. Second like DPSing in this game, might as well be. That's the threat of Barrack Genos though, and, and you have to nod your head, or, or give a nod uh, to Joel's as Ice Storm drops down. Playing solo tank in a triple DPS comp, not easy, and, and you gave him a little bit of a shout on that first mid. You know, smartly backing off, knowing when to engage, knowing when to disengage. That's a hard line to toe sometimes. For sure, but I think if I want to be any tank in solo, in solo tank, I'd say it's Barrack. Sure. Because if my if my DPS all need to back up and kind of kite away, I think Barrack is the best at being able to kite off. Yep. And Fish manages to trade for two yeah, before he goes nice. down, but it was kind of just a back and forth poke. There's still really no action beyond that, right. that dive. And I think VP just need to... Oh, that's, that's risky. That's risky. That's, that's <laughs> he wanted it. Toe in the line. It was a little bit too much, but no Cassie there. And that's really the biggest threat, I'd yep. say, to Crunchy's aggression. Good plug shot on Evil Eye. That's a big thing, I think, with Virtus Pro here. You, you need E-Raise to start setting up some of these kills where the rest of your team can just plug away a little bit. Joel's is going to bowling ball his way to safety here. 20 seconds remaining. Line is drawn. Rhino caught out just a little bit. Dosip's very low here behind his shield. One more shot will do it. The healing is good. Doesn't end up dropping off. Finally, Chronix tumbles up, finds the kill. Evil Eye looking to trade things out with the raise here, but all of the picks are going in favor of Virtus Pro. Likely going to time out, unless Evil Eye has something to say about it. Not sure Genos Eevee are going to push this one through, though. I mean, I, after seeing how Payne and T Mac played in that one yeah. set on, on, on Tuesday, I. 
Genos Eevee could probably win anything, apparently, if it's at least maybe if it's them piloting it. But right. So not surprising, I think the fury I sustained this early in the game is going to be a really tough mountain, I think, for the triple DPS to climb. They're, they, I think, they're looking to one, 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 claw their way into the late game, or just keep winning the mids. You know, right. If you have a better comp for mid, you're gonna win the game in the end. You know, as long as you keep executing at least properly. And th that was a good that was a good retake uh, from VP. They really played yep. around Erase's positioning, and I think that's what they're gonna have to do on their defenses. Uh, on mid, it's going to be a little bit harder because the triple DPS, they're going to be very slippery, kind of kiting around, trying to surround arrays, and sure. going to peek him from a lot of angles at once. It's going to be tough for him to really single out a lane he wants to watch. And I have to give a shout to Cruncy. I mean, he was 0 and 5, had a few assists prior to that nice double kill replay we saw, getting his name in the column there. Hexafire could be very impactful here. Fun fact, I won a ranked game with a Hexafire on a .7 mid fight. Oh, first win? Uh, yeah, actually. <laughs> Damn, Krosnik. Way to take the wind out of my sails. I'm up here feeling good, and, and suddenly I've never been lower. I'm going to move right on from that and talk about Joel's, who's dropped the dome shield onto the point here. Once that wears out, he's going to be in a bad spot. He's able to hang out behind the boxes, though, using the map cover very well. Everything, though, starting to get thrown out. Flight, Flashbang, Inflame, everything for Virtus Pro getting used here. A couple kills. Rhino trying to disengage, trying to peel back. He is not able to do so just yet either as Chronix here. One more shot on Daguerre will do it. And it seems like Vardis Pro have put together a successful mid. Yeah, Kanga thankfully were able to, I think, bait them in far enough so no one's capping. Still no cap time True. in for VP. So after this overpower stagger, they're not going to have a potential. They're not going to deny the retake. You know? right. Rhino going down on the side, though, might make things a little bit harder. Fish dying as well is going to make it easy for them to come in, yeah. but only Doe's really in the way for them. They have to just be aware of him and see if they can roll in. They're going to have to throw a DPS away to get yep. this touch. Yep. Might have to be Evil Eye on that EV. 93% looking for one more blink in there. Into the ice block he goes back out, so Overtime will get triggered, but you're right, he does trade out his life. Now Overtime begins. I don't know if anyone's in range to tumble in there. Chronix is not going to be able to do so, respawning back at base. Virtus Pro overwhelm Kanga this time around and win their first mid. Not only of the game, but of the set. And oh wait, no. Wrong. First mid ever in this set was Virtus Pro's first mid. But since then, this is their first mid. And that's on, on the back of the dive, I think, finally working for VP. They were trading fish for it, but Crunzy was getting away with it a little bit more. Uh, I was going to say, when you when you called for the Hexfire to be a full I was going to say, well, I don't know, man. This isn't really like a Hexfiring map or call. you got to remember, this know? is a gold-ranked game we're talking about here. <laughs> no, not about yours. I'm saying about your, your highlight of the Hexfire. Right. It's a tough comp to make it work in, but... He caught him. He caught him really in his ice block. I mean, th that's the ideal in this comp for them. Yeah, Everyone yeah, yeah. else is going to be able to get away, but he needed a point blank on the ice and found the pick onto him, which helped things go. I mean, he got three kills for his one death that mid, so good for him being a little bit more influential than we'd seen in the start. And that's going to have to keep up if VP want to take this map. That's the dream: an ice block hexafire. I'll take that seven days a week. Uh, not going to be able to use it this time though. Chronix starting to fire. Double kill on the, the Cassie to hold things in the balance here. A minute and 20 seconds left. This is where, you know, things stalled out on the opposite side for, for Kanga, and this is where things looking to stall out for Virtus Pro. It's kind of a one way or the other map when you think of it that way. If you're able to bust down that initial turn, it kind of just flows downhill from there. But once the defense is able to kind of draw that line, become so much more difficult to push through. That corner is one of the harder ones to do, especially if the enemy team has vertical mobility and they can just keep going over the house to get right. into your back line. It's really tough to get through this, and you can already see why. You can just get surrounded so right. easily. Rhino coming into the back and getting two. Crunchy's going to go down almost indefinitely now, oh, but good shot by shot, Graze yeah. might make this possible. Did you see what the, the ragdoll did in yeah. the back with the EV2? Oh my, I mean, it, we're not even on his POV, but you know that was a good shot. One more quick scope to seal it up. Three in that fight for Erase. One way to break the uh, choke point. Just get a triple kill on Strix. Easy. This time around as they round the uh, potentially final corner on this map. 20 seconds left for Virtus Pro. Could push this one through and make it 3 1. Kanga only burn the Enlightenment. Looks like they want to try to do it right now. The overpower goes on to Rhino. That is successful, so it's a 4v5. Kanga on the back foot here in flame. They're actually going to just try to throw everything at the wall, seemingly. Chronix is pulling one back on a Pacheco, though. Lots of that mobility now gone for Virtus Pro. But the cart ever inching closer here. Chronix might just have to do it on his own. He has a double kill in this fight. An unofficial triple for him. The knockback might just save Kanga in this case. And Virtus Pro, they've burned everything. They wanted this one to go in, but it's not looking like it will. Too much damage on the Chronix. 
But Rhino, Evil Eye, they're still alive. The respawns are too close, and Kanga tied up at two. I like the decision by VP to throw those ults in. If they had gotten the win, they could have taken it 4-1, keeping the game from going to the late game, which is where their comp is going to falter a little bit in comparison uh, to Kanga's comp. Is that a... Ooh. Is that a, almost a no scope? Ooh. Uh, I, I, I think it might be a spectator All I can thing. say is, ooh. He might have scoped it, <laughs> that's but all I, I, know I didn't even say. know what to oh say my. after seeing that. But Erase, I think that's why Strix is getting picked so much recently, just the potential to swing a fight like that. When you do that much damage in a single shot, and you connect all of them, you're going to swing the fight very quickly if you're just if you're constantly hitting it and getting pocketed. Vex's ability to pocket right now, yeah. still pretty strong, but Cod 3s are online for Kanga. Rhino, Evil Eye, and Jules all have it online, so if they're if he's trying to save someone that's being focused by them and not specifically Chronix, the Furious Vex is not going to be able to make a huge difference in the fight at that point. I think I've seen a resurgence of, of blue items over the last couple of days. Not only on Willow, I know that that's, you know, a couple item favorite. Good shots by Gera there through time and space specifically is the shot drops off E-Raise. It's been a big presence as Kanga now storming the gates, forcing Virtus Pro back. A couple ultimates ready for them. Still some key ones down for Virtus Pro here. Ice Storm most notably drops in on a Doseps. One more plug of damage will do it. Cruncy as well. So no more front line for Virtus Pro. It's Kanga now try to zone for point number three. I think it's they almost have it guaranteed now. The VP doesn't have anyone mobile enough to really go in. They might have they're gonna have to send Fish in to touch it with that because of how late their tanks died. So we're going to probably see Fish, unless he wants to save his KD, will fly in and touch the point at the last second. And it looks like he's going to save his KD instead and stay in the air. So Kanga does get that cap there. 3-2 right now with the potential to Ooh. end this game if they keep this going. Fantastic shots by Chronix to find that, but there's still a lot of time for VP to respawn. And they're doing just that. Well fought on the mid there from Kanga. Starting to turn things around a little bit. Been a back and forth game, back and forth set. In the, uh, the two games we've had up to this point in Flame, now back off of cooldown. They used it on the last payload attempt, or push attempt. Did not succeed in that one. Vex, though, finds the first kill this time around on a Joel's. Tumbling out as Chronix gets the reset. He's able to stay alive here as Rhino pulls one back on a Fasheko. But this is the downside of Fish Market, where if you're not able to really bust down that door early on, you're kind of forced back. Kind of fighting on opposite sides, though. Not so much spawn to spawn, but... Kind of front to back here on this mid. They could get enveloped by some of the mobility Kanga has. Mid fight two, electric boogaloo here. That's right. They take it a little bit of ground though. Kanga, uh, VP actually having to disengage to the point. This void grip might get Doe completely caught out here, and it does. So Joel's will roll it down. They're not even looking at him. They had no idea. Doe didn't yeah. say anything, but wow. the dive in the back actually managed to find two kills. Yeah, pulled back a couple. He raised in Cruncy. The saving grace for Virtus Pro this time around. Joel's uses bowling ball to get out alive. Some extra shielding from him. Gera, a nice double kill. Wasn't through time and space. Just a good old star splitter makes it three. Erase stays alive for a double kill for himself. Finally going to shut down the reign of terror. I take it back. Rhino saves the life of Gera. He has three kills with his primary weapon in that fight. Doing the damage himself. Make a quad DPS for Kanga. As they show a little bit of a chink in the Virtus Pro armor and round this next corner. And this is going to be a really hard area to break. I, I, if they want yeah. to turn it now, they have to use some of their ultimates. I mean, they have four online. Dome Shield maybe to get room and buy them time to line up with through time and space. That could be possible. They also have the Ice Storm through time and space yep. combo. If they should choose to use it, Evil Eye accidentally hitting himself when blinking up to shoot <laughs> over the roof. I mean, it's hard to get that angle, especially when you're trying to avoid a sniper, you know? Yeah. Scout, uh, Scout coming into to try to find the setup, but they don't connect anything with the through time and space. Yep. They maybe should have looked for a combo there, but both don't hit anything, and VP are fighting a ton of damage. Yeah, Rhino, Gera, both gone. You still have two damage dealers thanks to the triple DPS, but... You're losing members left and right. Joel's the most recent to go down with 10 seconds left. Evil Eye may be able to get an overtime touch here, but the respawns are so far. I think this one might just spell the end. We might have a, a .7 fight on our hands to determine if we're tied up or Kanga go up 2-0. Not too surprising on Fish with the, with the two comps that are pretty strong, but Kanga have had the better of the mid fights. Yeah. So, and they have a better mid fight comp and it's in late game. For them. So I think that it is stronger for them. I think this is Gera's. Uh, Star Splitter SMG massacre sure. that he had earlier. Not something you see too often, but I mean, Janos does a respectable amount of damage. This used to be the the cuss special. <laughs> right. If you were scrimming against G2, you'd you'd be you'd be staring forward and then getting chipped just a little bit from behind. You're like, what? what? Well, he had on? he had three total in that fight. Four now on the game. Most of them. I mean, that last fight morale boost one for him. Chronics morale boost two for Vex. Chronics with one more damage than a race. Calculated. <laughs>
Hey, he's on top of the damage charts. That's what matters, right? <laughs> That's uh, big calculations from him. Blast Shields, Haven. All abound for everyone in this game. Only Gera really avoiding that one. There's the overpower on a Joel's. The long range Kinexi Rays finds himself the kill, though. So frontline presence now immediately gone in flame as well. That's going to put Kanga in a really bad spot unless they're able to get one on their exfil here. And it's not going to happen if Pacheco Faith lighting up above a triple kill for the Willow may have just sealed this game. Especially with how forward VP is now. Cruncy's going to be zoning with the Ruckus, so dismounts are abound. And Joel's <laughs> has to disengage. No dash means he has even less of a chance to get in. Completely forced out. They need to have yeah. the bully come in, but he was the last death. There he is, and he's already dismounted. That's going to be that's gonna be game here. I, I can't imagine a world where they're able to get in, get a touch. Not going to happen. Virtus Pro seal it up. One concise team fight. Wow, they just steamrolled that triple DPS over towards that last end of the fight. Hats off to Virtus Pro. That's a big fight back from them, tying the series up at one. Kanga now 50% on their triple DPS efforts. Yeah, and hopefully for them, I mean, they, they can. I don't think it was that bad of a game for them. No, honestly, that last mid fight was very decisive mm -hmm. from them. But I think that was just VP execution, and they can learn from that. You know, they can take this going forward. This is yeah. We people thought this wasn't going to be a super contested set, but Kanga's really putting up a fight. I feel like we, we've seen now twice teams try to uh, allow the Willow through and think they have an answer for it. I mean, if there's any team that's going to do it, it's one with a Cassie and a Leon on yeah. it. But a little bit too much damage from Pacheco that time around. We're tied up at one. The tiebreaker's coming up right after this. INAP, powering the control room for the Paladins Premier League. Well, the day of the 4-3 continues as we have yet another one that gets put into the blocks. Fish market comes through, and well, you would have guessed it maybe based on the history we gave you of Kanga prior, but they don't end up closing <laughs> this one out. Virtus Pro tie up the set 1-1. One, one. And it, again, it was kind of, I want to say maybe the reverse of Bright Marsh, where like Virtus Pro started out crazy strong on Bright Marsh and then mm -hmm. taper off. Kanga started out really well here. And then just kind of tapered off as time went on. Which is a bit strange, uh, given that, you know, it, it's a bit of a generalization, but 3DPS doesn't really fall off in the game because they don't rely on mitigation. They don't rely on a, a ton of healing or anything like that. It really is just up to the players to, to win the game. Just hit your shots. Hit your shots, kid. That's all it takes. And uh, Ray's cracking six figures here, 17 and six. Yeah. Before we went into this game, uh, before we went in here, it, we kind of highlighted that you know, it's tough to, to run flankers into uh, Strix just the way he is right now. That combination blow, very easy for him to take out Evil Eye mid-flight, especially when, you know, you like to get close on Eevee. You want to be closer if you can help it to your targets, but you also make yourself more susceptible to the flare combination. The closer you get that, you know, the easier projectiles are to connect. Both Eevee's basic attacks as well as the flashbang as well as the flare all projectiles, so the closer she gets, the more danger she's actually in. And he was just pretty much all the time on the money whenever he needed his shots. And again, if you don't hit the headshot, you just happen to get a body shot, it's still 1,200 with triple DPS. That is half of four people on that team's health bars if you just miss or hit yeah. the body shot. If you get the headshot, for a lot of those, I mean, for Eevee, that's, that's a full-on elimination for the rest. They're so incredibly low that it's a very easy pickup for the rest of the team. So Arrays dialed in, and it helped his team out immensely 
being able to bring that damage. His slash line was really the only one as well that that stood out that that drastically out of that. Yeah, game. honestly, man, I feel I feel like Mave could have been a uh, maybe a better option for Evil Eye. I think he's he's a decent Mave. I think Mave has a bit of a better matchup against a lot of these characters. Still susceptible, obviously, to the anti flank pressure, but has a little bit more health than Eevee. We're usually running damage reduction in your loadout. You have yeah. natural sustain built in with nine lives. You can actually contest Willow up in the sky. I think much better. It takes all of your cooldowns to do it normally, to get that hang time, to stay close enough to Willow, yeah. to consistently hit the knives. But I, you know, it's a better shot than I think Eevee has in most cases, and uh, he certainly got the shorter end of the stick there against a raise on Fish Market, which is not good because that was his job. That's your job, right? That's your job as the flanker is to shut down that sniper. Normally, teams have had an off tank to spare to kind of go put in front of it, but not with a three DPS composition. It's all spilt milk at this point, though. Got to yeah. just move on. What a weird set, though, where both teams, you know, winning each other's map picks, but At not the their own. At the very beginning. Yeah. yeah. And I was going to say, I mean, honestly, there was a period of time where it looked like Kinga might have been able to win. And I was preparing myself to come out onto the desk and be like, all right, Kanga fans, Nick, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. we're going to come out and have to have to throw out. Kanga has found themselves up 2-0 in the past. And so, uh, you know, early, early on leads like that can hit or miss, I think, their mark. So we're going to have to figure out. I, I would argue if that last map had been like a 4-0, VP had just thrashed them. Yeah. Then this was going to be, okay, Bright Marsh was a fluke. Everything's going to be a lot faster. Both of them being 4-3s, us traveling from like Bright Marsh, which is just standard, everyone that goes there pretty much every set, to Fish Market, you see it every once and a while, if Envy are playing really is the, the main key. And now you're going to Frozen Guard, which is another map that – for a few weeks there was like high priority. We saw it almost every set. Now it's shifted to this like fringe map. And uh, this one could keep that 4-3 ball rolling for them. Maybe keep Kanga kind of fighting up against Virtus Pro pretty closely. Different style in the band so far where we saw Nara normally taken out of the conversation. It's not the case anymore. Ash has not been banned or picked for either of these squads so far in this game, yet she finds herself banned away before the draft even begins this time around. Khan will be the early selection, leaving both Barrick and Inara open. This could be Kanga trying to get VP to go that direction instead of going, you know, Willow Furia or whatever it is. Yeah. X, X plus Furia seems to be the, the equation for Virtus Pro in the first phase of their drafting. And that will at the very least continue. Can't really fault them much for it. Furia brings, uh, you know, the Sarah ability to pocket heal a frontliner that Genos lacks. Less consistent but higher intensity damage amplification during the eight second window that her ultimate buffs her entire team. And it's a nearly global range. It's not global, but it's it's damn big. You can be yeah. pretty, pretty far away, which is important on Frozen Guard. Furia is a very big, you know, don't broke, or it's not broke, so don't fix it type of situation for them. Talked about this in game one as well with Barrick being a very flexible, you can go a lot of different ways. Eevee Cassie is just the wave for them today. Again, I think it's really, Chronix is a great Cassie for sure. So yeah. this is less about him and his Cassie, but Evil is not always on Eevee like this. So it really feels like he's just trying to keep Fish away from it today. <laughs> I mean, especially out of this, they've, they've had it both games so far now, all three games of the set they'll have had it. And he's had pretty much both kind of performances you would expect. Bright Marsh, he played pretty yeah. well on Eevee. Fish Market didn't quite hit the mark on Eevee, and that's exactly like at this point how I've kind of gotten to notice Evil Eye is just he is an incredible blaster on some days. Just much like Hero is one of the best tanks we have in the league on some days. It's just depending on what he is bringing to the table this time around, he's going to go back to the EV. He's got two games of warm-up on her, so you could expect maybe Frozen Guard to feel good for her. But I think it was Fish Echo and his play like a pro who even said that this was probably one of her weaker maps. Granted, he said that, I think, with a grain of salt no that she doesn't really have a weak map. It's just if you had to choose one that's the yeah. weakest, it Time would be Frozen Guard. Our enemy. More cooldowns you have to burn to get to your targets. To the worse us. off you will be. Shrix is going to be the run back, obviously, for Virtus Pro and for a raise. Cracked six figures, the only one to do so. Hugely positive kill death ratio as well. Matt is up very well with Eevee. King, I don't know if they're going to try and go for a three DPS again with this kind of build up towards it, but they don't really have a great off tank option. 
And Nara is still on the board if they want to go for that route. And this would get them back to more normalcy where Rhino can be on one of his power off tank. One of the few Maldama choices. I'm, I'm just got to comment on that here. before we get through the rest of this draft. But Kanga has I always, to me, God. this whole year, not even just this phase, this whole year, if Rhino's having a good game on the front line, they almost always win. It's, it, it's, it is a very black and white thing for me. And he has done fine on the on the three DPS. Yeah. Uh, don't get me wrong, but it is just like it seems like a hard and fast win condition. When Rhino gets in control of the game, it, everything else becomes very easy for Kanga, and those guys are not going to miss with the margin for error that Rhino could provide. So I want to know. I mean, they're switching away from the triple DPS here, but Ruckus, Drogos, Strix, like a few of those we're used to seeing on this map. I don't think I ever see all three kind of thrown at once because all three of them feel to have their like, yeah. own little hinge. How are you feeling about this? From Fish Bro? is the only one to do to do Drogos on Frozen Guard. I was very skeptical of it the <laughs> first time I saw it, but I, he proved me wrong. Yeah, well, you can't doubt Fish. We'll have to see whether or not he gives us reason to doubt him here as we go down to Frozen Guard. That's right. Regardless, somebody taking the lead in this set after Frozen Guard, Kanga. Throwing a bit of a curveball at us with a normal composition this time around. Double, triple DPSs, 50% win rate for them. But this time, going back to a little realm of normalcy here. Frozen Guard for the first time today. Kanga, back to a little bit of standard here. Still Eevee, still Cassie, but they're trading in one of those damage dealers for an extra front line. Yeah, they're still doing something off meta. They have Damba. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. guess that's true. <laughs> <laughs> kind of weird to say that, but... They do have Damba, and I, I, I don't know, that Cassie Eevee early pick, they did really open them up to this Drogos. I mean, Fish played Drogos on this map before. It was good. It's this Worm Jets this it time. Hurts to say out of, it hurts to have this come out of my mouth, too, that Drogos is good on this map, because I feel like I've, I've talked to a guy in a casual about this oh before. No. But when it's Fish oh piloting no. it, great shots by him to find the first one, and he has such an advantage over Evil Eye here. Drogos destroys oh no. him on flat, on flat maps. Oh, God. Pacheco, stop. Poor Chronix is trying to find some damage on the right-hand side and is thinking, all right, I'm going to tumble out to safety. And then falls right into a Fischeko, Fischeko rocket that time around. Starting off well, two kills, a couple assists for Fishy on the Drogo. 63% for Virtus Pro as Kanga try to weave their way back into this one. Halfway there on a couple of their ultimates. A minute and a half into this game, they will get the touch with Evil Eye. You see that Fischeko prediction. He knows Eevee so, so well. Trades out effectively that time. There will be one more attempt here from Kanga. They're going to be doing it at a one-man disadvantage. Joel's forced all the way back here. Overtime begins. One frontliner left to do it. Rhino is going to help Chronix trade out. This is going to be the rest of the bodies falling here shortly. Damba, Gera, the last one to try to get it done. Not going to happen. Virtus Pro, strike first. Great countering by Fish onto Evil Eye. Just Damage. denying him. Denying him any ability to go in the back end. Literally full parity, <laughs> five for five. Top to bottom VP dominating the damage charts. Rock is actually below the Furia, but Furia does so much damage. That's why you pick her right yep. now. Strix and Drogo is a great lineup, I think, right now in this meta for this map, there especially because of the DPS picks from Kanga. And great aggression from Frenzy, finally putting himself above his Furia yeah, and I'm getting another <laughs> kill to his kill column. I think he noticed the damage meters and said, all right, I got to do a little something about this. Uh, helped out with a little bit of poke damage. Joel's, though, gets in on the action. A nice double kill from the Inara. Stalls this one out. Good fight back from Kanga. Traditionally a map. I'm not going to say it's easy to defend on, but longer range, and, and you'll feel a little bit comfortable. Pacheco in the back line, nearly causing some trouble, but gets traded out by Rhino. He must have gone around the outside. Yeah. I think that's the only way he would have done it, around the far right. Over the little edge that I really hadn't been thinking about until I watched Drogos get played on this map for the first time by Fish. Con shield broken down really quickly. VP have a strong mm -hmm. record in Strix, so able to burn through that fast. Not really going to matter against the Inara, but just rattle off those headshots instead. And that'll make enough of a difference. Crunchy diving in, getting peeled for by Commander's grab. So a quick trade back and forth, 4v4. Yep. VP trying to find the next pick. I'm looking for Pacheco. Oh, oh no, that's so oh. unfortunate. That's not what he meant Get to down, do. Mr. President. But he did it anyway. Evil Eye blinks in, catches a rocket. Pacheco finds Joel's nonetheless. Dosefs throws a couple on there. I I flinched <laughs> backwards. I didn't expect Evil Eye to fly on through, but he did <laughs> nonetheless. Pacheco, happy to take that one. Double kill served up on a silver platter. Said, you're right. Get down, Mr. President. But then Mr. President caught a rocket anyway that time around. Pacheco. Well, six in the clip. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. You can you can block one, but then he's still got five more to uh, try to do it. Wall goes up to block some of this Hexafire here. 
Some good trades get this payload moving ever closer. He raised. Trying to find just one pick that could open the door here. Evil Eye's gonna have something to say about that. One more blink shot, good. Quick scope in there. Onto the Eevee, Seismic Crash rips through. Not too many stuns to be had in Flame though. Goes in onto the side of Virtus Pro. Not getting traded out though effectively. Kanga holding onto everything except Seismic Crash. Install this out just for a minute longer. And the health is so low that they can't really refight this. The tanks also went down at a pretty rough time. So with Vex going down, I don't think they're gonna be able to touch again. VP disengaging, trying to keep them from getting any more alt charge. Keep Joel specifically from not getting a seismic yep. crash, and they just didn't have the focus fire for that fight. Please be there. I hope it is. I really hope it is. They didn't have the focus fire for that fight. They couldn't. They couldn't bring down the Inara yeah. or anybody up top that got low. Sure. Rhino, I think was about half HP, but just couldn't find it. And yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wait. So wait. So he. He got was flying through, beam. got stunned by the beam, and then just kind of gravity fell right into the... Yeah. <laughs> no, that wasn't intentional by, by Evil Eye. Oh, that is amazing. Honestly, props to Vex for that sick air Yeah. Shot. Yeah, that was perfect. <laughs> Absolutely perfect for Sheko at 7, 2, and 4. Uh, Five, four the, the seventh of that was Evil Eye getting stunned out into one of his rockets. Funny interaction, but uh, a kill nonetheless here. Four Rezils already online for VP. And... and God, Fasheko just dominated this first mid fight. So you look for Kanga to maybe have some answer to it, but Dragon Punch could turn everything around. Can't really stop the Dragon Punch from coming in with the Inara. You can trade him out at most, but he takes more of the health pool out of the fight than you do. Yep. Two quick ones for VP. Garrett now stuck here in the back. Micah dove as well. Barely keeping himself alive, but still trading on the far wall side. Yeah, Evil Eye is going to try to find some plug shots here. Can't hover up above quite as effectively as Fasheko on that Drogos, but he can do this where he looks to get aggressive but he has nobody left on his team flashbang rips through no quick scope this time around Virtus pro just now taking up the point mantle garnering themselves three percent per tick of course the back in this fight will look to find some poke damage evil eyes looking for some of those connected shots up in the air so hard to find chronix though has a little bit better of a time doing it scout finally coming out here 84 percent for Virtus pro first kill is chronix on the so some of that aerial advantage now gone for Virtus Pro as Crunchy is able to pull one back as well. Erase these long range shots. This is where he'll feel comfortable right now as things slow down. Fish actually did the best thing he could there. He kept pulling them back on the far side, baiting them in further and further, because once they cross that, that line in the middle, they were right in Erase's sight lines. He gets two more. Joe's probably going to find this one for his team. Chronix trying Ooh. to live as long as he can, Close. but will not be enough. But Fish go baiting them in. Perfectly yep. for a raise to shoot. Once they got in, they were too low. Couldn't contest the point to the level they needed to. And Crunzy found one, I think, with a Hexafire in the back as well. Right. And on maps like this, this is these are hard maps. Unless you're doing, like, objective denial Hexafires. Sure. It's really hard to get kills with Hexes on this map, especially into Cassie and just characters right. that are very good against you. Well, you got uh, 6, 2, and 8 for Dosups. 6, 1, and 7 for Erase. Fischeko at 8, 4, and 4. You know, damage charts, essentially the same as what we saw at the beginning of the game, except Vex, understandably, has fallen <laughs> a little bit behind. But the rest of the four up ahead of Kanga this time around. That's a good stun. Not enough, though, to stop the onslaught of damage from Virtus Pro. Ripping through Kanga here. That's a clean sweep. Only one left alive. That's Evil Eye, who was able to fly out to safety. Inching closer now is this payload. And I assume that this is where Erase will feel most comfortable here. Just try to find a plug shot on that high ground. Oh, yeah, for sure. This is definitely his strongest place to be. And also, Fishigo, the versatility there going above and over that wall so great. I also want to point out, Cruncy has an angle he can do to dash yeah. from the left onto that high ground. So he's able to get to a place that most tanks can't go. Rock is kind of a pocket pick for Frozen Guard because of that. And both tanks going okay. down means VP just push it straight in. There's no one left to contest. I mean, that is just Kanga crumbling in this case. You're focused on too many things. I mean, you have you raise far away doing this, but on the payload push instead, staying further back, finding some plug shots. Then you got Fasheko around the opposite side playing a pseudo flank almost. It's going to be hard. And, and he raise honestly, is a perfect example of, I think, why we are starting to see Strix more and more in that. I mean, if you are hitting those shots consistently, the reward is top damage in the game. Yeah, the since he doesn't have to charge up, right. the consistency is so powerful. If you're hitting quick scopes, you're doing more than a Cassie early on. I mean, it's 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 hard to say, but use that immediately switch to your flare and shoot. That's 2000 burst damage. Right. That's more than I think the full Leon combo right. or at least equal to it 
in half the time. Sure. And now that these players have had time to kind of grind on it and practice it, they're getting a lot more. A Dragon Punch coming in to find one early. Stopped by the wall, though. Might Ooh. still trade. One for one. VP taking a lot of ground on the sides, though. Yeah, yeah. The same target as he did last time around. Cut out Joel's. Much more checkerboardy this time around, though. Crunzi, very low health, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Rhino on the opposite side. Hexafire is going to try to find a kill. Doesn't do it just yet. Rhino, so low, though. Crunzi's able to stay alive, get the kill, trade it out with the off tank. One more mid fight for Virtus Pro to take the lead in this set. They're looking poised to do it, just not getting onto the point. Kanga, plenty of time to get back and give this another try. Still overpower, still seismic crash. Good dismounts here from Fischeko. It's going to have Chronix turning that corner, though, and you have to be careful trading out with them. One more air shot will do it. Evil Eye is able to get out and stay alive, though. A little bait and switch coming in. Oh, good stun. Erase finds the kill, but it's two for Kanga. And they're using Seismic Crash on point two to try to find some. Stunning Barrack, but dying to Erase and Vex's combined damage. Evil Eye gets one in the back. Stun, though, might be able to get it. Vex does, so Vex with two this fight. He's stalling the point as long as he can, but Vex is actually going in. He wants more. He wants Garrett two. Gets down three, and now it's just Khan left on the point. Oh, my. He stuns him out again. He's looking for his third kill. He sets one up for Doseps. Overtime's going to begin. It's going to be Chronix who has to tumble in and try to contest here, but only death awaits on the opposite side. Joel's the last. Last line of defense here for Kanga. He's gonna fall after his wall does the same. And Virtus Pro with a clean fight. Some nice stuns from the Furia. Seal up game number three. Off the on the back of Vex, oh carrying his team like a sack of rocks through the end of that game. I mean, his team was playing really well, they but were. that last fight was was all Vex 100 percent He opened up the backpack, told him to yeah. jump in, and, and carried him on through the finish line. Yeah, what a play by VP, I think. I love <laughs> that comp was so good for that map, yeah. specifically. Like, the Drogo's taking the top right, Rock is taking the top left. That's a push you don't normally hmm. see on Frozen Guard. And I think it really took Kanga off guard. They weren't ready for the double upper pressure that right. they brought. Well, that's what you were kind of bringing up post picks and bans, was that yeah. Kanga maybe revealed a little bit too much too early. For sure. And that left them vulnerable to the to the Drogo's pick. Fasheko made it look great. I mean, firing on all cylinders right from the start. A little bit of a lull in the middle. But looked great down the stretch there. And then, of course, Vex. I mean, in a, in a day where supports have been somewhat hit or miss, you know, you know, some good games, some bad games, that's a great showing from Vex on the Fury. Who hasn't had a great win rate today either. At any rate, though, Virtus Pro win game three. Take a 2-1 lead in this series. Game four right after this. Alienware, the official PC provider of the Paladins Premier League. Virtus Pro scale things up, specifically, I think, Vex out of all of them. Fasheko, though, is connecting on a lot of shots. The Drogo's on Frozen Guard once again proves its worth as it comes through. And everybody on the team kind of escalated for that game. But but I do think, Nick, that it came down to Vex towards the end, who was really kind of yeah. connecting things for the team. You get to really start to see the value in this Furio when everybody's playing well and you can get aggressive on the support. Support damage definitely matters, but more so for Furio. I mean, she hits just so hard. When you get that attack speed passive roll, one of the cooler mechanics too, by the way. Once you get that all the way spun up, you pop in flame, you add 30% more damage on top of that. I mean, she becomes a very, very scary champion. Vex yeah. just running around, tapping people for over 400 damage. On a hit scan character, that damage is absolutely swinging team fights. He hit two huge long distance pyre strikes that absolutely affected the outcome of the 1v1s that they were involved in. Fortune 28, 
but you have to imagine how much of an impact he had. He's not always getting those and last 28. Hits, yeah, but yeah, it's that's a 28 a lot. that really comes through. <laughs> 11, 2, and 15 there for a raise, but it was the man, the myth, the legend himself, Vex, on this Furia. Like you said, showcasing why they prioritize Furia so heavily. I mean, this damage, just, it matters. It makes such a big difference. The healing is still so good. 264 or 16 headshots. That's literally Leon level damage, people. I mean, this character, when you pilot it right and, and with mastery, you are crushing fools when you get in there. And it helps you snowball that lead. It's the aggressiveness of the support. It's the way that Virtus Pro are playing. And when you can do everything in your power as a support, once you get that ball rolling, Furia really, you know, puts a lot into it in terms of keeping it going and keeping that momentum high. Whereas, you know, you're on a Genos, your damage isn't the the most, you know, great part about your kit. You're trying to amp up everybody else. Yes, you can get in there when your team starts to win a fight a little bit more. But I think Furia, especially with the amount of fall off she has because that weapon is so impactful. Yeah. Once you can turn your brain off and stop worrying about death, she becomes just a whole different beast. Well, Kanga have elected this time around, since Frozen Guard didn't work out so well for them, to try out Warder's Gate, but I have a sneaking suspicion Virtus Pro maybe have kind of dialed themselves in here. That last game was definitely a lot more in their favor. I will have to say, though, credit for them, whether or not they go EV this game is still to be seen, but Evil Eye had a really dope, you know, Mr. President get down, diving in front of a rocket just to <laughs> save his teammate. Didn't alter the team <laughs> fight at all. But you got to talk. But it looked really cool. <laughs> Those are the best. Those are the best moments that you can just laugh about, and it doesn't come at anyone's expense, really. So it may be evil if you want to think about it that way. And Ara back in the band section as Kanga will switch it up, take the barrack this time around, and force VP trying to get them maybe back on that con. It's, it's clear what they're trying to chip away at, Kanga, that is. It's very centric here around the front line. And now VP are going to be the ones that, have, that are switching it up. Keeping Fish off of Eevee all day long is something Evil Eye has been tasked with so far. Some games it's worked. Some games it hasn't. He's had to play into some tough matchups for sure with Arrays picking Strix the past two games. Yeah. But now VP will finally get it. And I love this adaptation from them as well, because it's like, okay, cool, you're going to take our tanks away? Then we'll just take your DPS. Like, what, what are you going to do? And now Evil Eye has to kind of switch it up. And as someone who's been kind of stuck on Eevee all day, you have to think what, where his mind goes. I mean, I've seen Pip on this map do well. I've seen Bomb King do well. It just kind of depends on who's piloting him and the, and the day they're having. Yeah, even... But I think Eevee's been the most consistent. Even Zen. Maeve is another one, man. Maeve yeah. has just been missing from this set. Cassie's all day long for Chronix. I don't have a problem with that. In fact, I would say I prefer it. You get the Predator and the Prey here. Cassie Ruckus they do well together because they ahead. do Keep well against each other tank. apart. We'll see what Virtus Pro respond with. I don't know. You know, people are just running Strix everywhere nowadays. I wouldn't <laughs> say it's par for the course on Warder's Gate. You but. know... I was sitting around when, when I read the stall changes when that came through, and I was like, man, I'm excited to see what happens with Sky. I, Strix wasn't even on my radar <laughs> for it. I was like, yeah, he'll be fine, but like he's still sniping. I was like, I wonder, wonder where, where Sky's going to end up. Nobody cares about her. Yeah. <laughs> it was all Strix all day. I just want to see her. I, just, I want the spice. I still want Shaolin's ultimate reverted back. I, I want that character back in the meta so bad. I think that'd be fun. That would feel better. He's not overwhelmed. I don't want to get up. I'm not going to get back on the soapbox again. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it a couple times. I'm going to let it lie where it is. That's how I feel, Virtus Pro. They have to uh, figure out what they want to go for here. Not a lot is left on the front line, man, because these bands have been four yeah, front lines essentially strong. nonstop outside of, I believe, Willow was banned one time. Other than that, it has been four front lines every single game sometimes yep. that forces you to scrape the bottom of the barrel but that has been okay for Virtus Pro because they have Cruncy and Cruncy still is in love with Ruckus and does well on it yeah. he's not one of those guys that has to go to Fernando first right there's not a lot of Ruckus players left in the league and the ones that are are comfortable with that situation but we'll have to see what type of impact he can have on Fernando and that's gonna be I think the biggest question marks coming through Nando isn't bad by any means. It's just every other tank does what he does better. So 
He's yeah, like the buck of the tanks. Yeah, where it's Shield, just like... dash, fireball. His He's ability gotta... names are just one word, sometimes like you know, just a couple <laughs> syllables even. They're it's just an extremely basic kit. And, uh, I mean, he does, again, he does the tank thing really well, but it's not, hey, I'm going to access you this damage reduction. Also, I'm soaking up more healing now. I it's just do what you yours. do, shield what you shield. And Immortal is very prominent, but maybe not going to play as big a role in this. It's definitely going to be more clutch than counters as they come through here. Potentially there for Dosips, could be there for Crunzi. I think both of these champions for Virtus Pro tossed up in the air. Have to see if the Mave can uh, can be a big power pick for Evil Eye today. I like what they've got. It's a it's kind of three DPS. We always say this about Ruckus because um, he is just that fat flanker, that that fat diver. He's just going to get to the back line and bruise you up. Fury is a little bit susceptible to it, barring Pyre Strike. Pyre Strike will be the I think the make or break for that matchup. Yeah. If Vex can hit a good Pyre Strike or Wings of Wrath away which throws another 600 damage into the equation that Fury is already a, you know, a pretty strong variable in. He might be able to survive that type of onslaught. Tyra, you know, you can sit on Tyra, but she is actually very tanky. You know, high base health, base lifesteal, usually has a little bit of damage reduction in the loadout and brings that damage amp to spike what is already a big problem for Ruckus. So again, yeah. this is, uh, you've got to perform here on Ruckus. Show us that Cruncy's not the only Ruckus player in this set. Well, it's Warder's Gate. The teams are locked in. So let's go ahead and take a peek at the faces behind the voices as we go down and see the casters and what they think about these drafts. There you go. Take a look. There's Kresnik's face as well. Yeah, sorry about that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you're not, Kresnik. Never apologize. you got a beautiful face. Kanga, Virtus Pro, Warder's Gate. you got a little Fernando, but mm -hmm. I want to talk about the Tyra. We never see Tyra anymore. And Virtus Pro uh, bring her out this time around. I think she's just really solid on this map. You can play on the sides, firebomb the point. And in that little room, you can kind of keep her protected. Yeah, the yeah. Eve can come in an Ice Storm, but Ice Storm doesn't really affect Tyra that much. Right. One other part of it that I don't think we mentioned was Immortal plus Crossfire isn't a bad engagement tool. No. You go in with that, you have your Tyra protected really effectively, I think, on the way in. And Crossfire's weakness is that... That's it. She just gets more damage and more speed, but comboed right. with that, you can get a lot more damage. Sure. Already playing up in that side room, as you point out. Staying nice and close to uh, Cruncy this time around on the con. Good shot there from Joel's. Must have been from behind, plugging that one away. Vex, though, trades out. That's a damage dealer for a damage dealer. Chronix, though, getting the better of these side engagements. The Cassie for him, one of his best champions. Absolutely. Ray's not able to... Uh, Really dip his toes in the water just yet. All of the trades going for Kanga this time around. 54% for them. Dosip's the last to fall. Zvertus Pro still have time for maybe one more chance at this one. Dismount not quite onto Fasheko just yet. Might have to rely on that Eevee to get a touch. He looks for it, doesn't get it. Gera gets the kill. 96-99, don't believe he did get the touch, and he did not. And Kanga, strike first. Fish with a small little mechanical mistake. I think he meant to soar and then cancel with the ice block, but he ice blocked first, so he didn't get oh, no. the momentum carry forward to touch the point with the ice block. So unfortunate for him, just barely off. But I, I honestly don't think it would have mattered. It's right. for VP. They, they would have had to still get in with everybody else and then find kills. Very difficult. Chronix, quick one. Onto Fish. Mm -hmm. Good on him. Uh, abilities canceled as they back up onto the high ground there. Doe. I actually like the Nando into the Merrick matchup, yeah. personally, especially with Brand. Because if you stack up on him and his turrets, you can get 400, st scaling up to 1,200 if you get both of his turrets there. So lots of extra sustain for Fernando there. Better matchup for him, for sure, than Inara. I mean, just left-click yeah. Inara that has her DR up is probably the saddest Fernando moment <laughs> I've ever had. You know, I think Fernando gets a bit of a raw deal sometimes. He certainly <laughs> does the point tank thing pretty well, but that's kind of what he does. He does the point tank thing, and that's why you pick him. And uh, Dosip's finding a kill here for Fernando as Kanga round the big first choke point corner here. Up and over on the crystal, <laughs> dropping down from the heavens as Cruncy gets the kill on a Dosip's this time around. So good style out here from Virtus Pro. And, and, and you look at Warder's Gate and Kanga specifically, this is a map that Kanga have found a pretty decent amount of success on, most notably in the last split. So I'm not surprised here. You know, 2-1 is a very volatile scoreline. You maybe want to put your last best foot forward here to try to prevent it from going to 3-1. Very close now to pushing this one in. 
Especially if they think they can flip the momentum too. Yeah. You know, turn the momentum now. Maybe they think they can carry that with them moving forward. Uh, do up top. Flanker's kind of going one-to-one -one in a small little choke point. Not normally where you want those characters to be, but it's the nature of the game. It's where they have <laughs> to be to hold this map, both of them kind of on this high ground. It's going to be really slow until one team gets some damage on the other. Yep. The healing on both isn't really crazy, so right. both teams just want to find that small advantage they can push off of. And Midnight might just be what Kang is looking for. Evil Eye trying to get out of danger this time around. Fischeko flying high above. One more shot will do it. Fischeko finds it. The 1v1 outplay from Fishy on the Eevee. Arguably the best in the world on that champion. Virtus Pro clean up the rest, only lose one in the meantime. Might even be able to stagger out Gara here with 10 seconds remaining, some good dismounts. So it might be all sealed up. Chronix, oh, there he is. One more shot. Oh, Chronix, good trade out there onto Fischeko. Nobody in range to touch, though. It's all peanuts. We're tied up at one. Yeah, that little push at the end there. I mean, Fish just getting some extra credits, honestly. Sure. That, that little chase. That, there was no real way they were going to go back in no matter what happened there, but Fish on the Eevee, I think it's been pretty good there, yeah. even even with the mid-fight uh, not necessarily the best for them. I think now they can play a little bit harder onto Fish, try to get a little bit more space for him. Cruncy not dying a lot. Maybe he could be a little bit more aggressive to try to pull some aggro off of off of Fish. And right. They need to definitely watch that backside a little bit more. Chronix was able to get through and find a pick onto Vex and pressure Doe from behind, which forced him onto the point kind of snowballed the entire ending of the fight. So right. a little bit better control, I think, by Cruncy and Fish on the on the far right side yep. uh, to deny that flank onto Vex. I think Rhino uh, on Kanga's side will look to be a little bit more involved this time around. Good dismount. Keeps Fischeko away, forced to wormhole in. He's going to blink his way right on back out of that one. As Kanga try to retake this... High ground here, Virtus Pro able to defend, so we're tied up at one. No fast cap for either side. He raised, playing the same way he did last time around in Flame, though, is what starts it off this time. The grenade's gonna do it on the Evil Eye. Fischeko as well, trading out on Rhino. Had a tough go of things on the Ruckus this time around. Dome Shield gets dropped. Nice stun flowing through there. Joel's gets dropped. He raised a double kill, and Dosips puts the icing on the cake. Now, Virtus Pro so in control of this mid. The sides were controlled. Kanga couldn't flank and find what they wanted, and Arrays, uncontested, just absolutely rained hell down on them. That's exactly how they wanted to play this. They had to burn the Immortal just to keep himself alive, but the time that it bought was enough for Arrays to finish all the kills. Good forward zone means Kanga has no chance to touch. VP do convert this, and they want to get a stagger here. They want to get to this last corner before they can maybe explode it with their ults. The faster they get there, the more chance they have to use the ults to convert. And uh, Rhino finally getting on the board now. As Pacheco is the receiver of that one. Hexafire into the back of a couple. He's going to find some good damage on this one. Helps out Gera. The kill on he raised. Just plugs away some damage at the others. It's uh, about time for Rhino. He, he has you know had a real tough start to this game, as I've pointed out. So finally getting, getting involved in some capacity has been great for him. He's just not been able to get comfortable. He just doesn't have a real place to go in. Yeah. He's not great into the Tyra, especially one that's being protected by another tank. Eevee just runs away most of the time. Or just does this where the Ruckus, unless he's hitting crazy air shot uh, missile barrages onto them, there's just nothing that he can right. do most of the time. So he has to really find his opening most of the time. That's going to be on Vex, but we know how good Vex is. Vex is really going to play around that. Oh. The stun right there oh, no. him on the way out. Good ice block. So Rhino goes down right there. Ice block does keep, uh, does keep people alive, but... Oh, sorry, excuse me. His fish should go alive, but not too much longer if pressure stays like this. That's right. Chronix, though, keeping things in the balance. And Gera as well, finally dropping off your rays. Looks like a... Great start to the fight, just for a moment there from Virtus Pro, but unfortunately way too much presence. Another good stun there, but that's not able to pull things back for Virtus Pro. A minute left, Kanga strong on the defense here. Some ultimates coming out, crossfire, only one use for Virtus Pro. Hexafire not used in that fight, but a, a moment ago for Rhino. So only one used in that last engagement. Virtus Pro was still with some good tools to maybe get this one inched in. Look for a trade. Continue the, the, these 1v1 flank engagements on the offside. Evil Eye sort of a 2v1 into Pacheco's backside there. So Evil Eye will be happy to take that one. Uh, but that's honestly, it's dictated a lot of how these fights have gone. Where, where if Evil Eye is able to get comfortable and move forward, good for them. Or, or Pacheco is the one dictating a lot of what Virtus Pro are doing. It's fun in the opening, and I think it's a lot about map knowledge. I mean, this yeah. is one of Kanga's favorite maps, so clearly they're going to be looking for those a lot of the time. VP may be a little bit less comfortable. They don't seem to be always watching these angles, right. which comes with scrimming the map playing the map in, in tournament, knowing what they're going to try to oh. be abusing a lot of the time. Another maybe 1v1 over here. Great mid-range shot by Fish, but 
Why just we disengage here? They're both connecting everything, but oh. the, the healing from the Genos Mark is just enough to keep Evil Eye alive. Both players disengage. Oh, come on. That's not a 1v1. <laughs> come on. You, is that what you'd say if that was a King of the Ring matchup? Yeah, how are you going to Astro Mark somebody in a 1v1? Well, what is this? This is King of the Ring. This is not PPL action. Absolutely not. But it does end up going in Kanga's favor there. Thanks in large part to the Astro Mark Evil Eye. Nice double kill there from him. And a good defense ties this one up at two. You raise on the on the uh, direct damage dealers, the uh, the Tyra this time around. That was a big topic of conversation. Uh, pretty hit or miss, but looked pretty good by and large in this game so far. Yeah, they managed to protect him, and that's all they really need to do. That that's the whole point of picking a Tyra, I think, in this meta is being able to just keep them alive. They're kind of the center, the core yeah. of what you want to be doing. That damage boost so massive, especially when it's stacked up with the inflict. Right. You know, that's a lot. And also, Doe, still top damage. Yeah. He was top damage. Top after damage, the last Fernando. Too. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, I mean, when I play Fernando, that happens a lot, but <laughs> you don't see it a lot in these PPO sure, games. Sure, sure, so sure, sure, sure. Great to. Uh, I won't call you on that. I won't. I won't <laughs> ask for proof. I, I, just assume that you're correct. I, I appreciate that. that. That's the level of trust that we really need to be achieving right. here. And same strategy for them, but it looks like Kang is a little bit more ready for this. But they spot it out. They know Hexafire are going to come in, but should be body blocked by the tank. Oof. But not fast enough. Overpower might turn this into two quick ones, though. Okay. They do end up getting Evil Eye there. Double kill from Cruncy. Finds Rhino on the back end of it. You're right. Two for one trade. Joel's, though, out damages the top damage dealer for Virtus Pro and Dosups. But Fasheko trades out on Gera. That's not good. And Flame now starts things off. Dome Shield drops onto the point. And that's going to keep them alive a little bit longer. Fasheko, he'll call him on that. He blinks in, gets a kill on a Chronix, but Joel's safe beneath his shield, but not for much longer once the crossfire starts stirring out. He's forced behind his shield, bouncing back and forth through time and space off to the side. Does not connect this time around. Virtus Pro cauterize those wounds, stay alive. Rhino back in the fight, though, gets rid of e Rays. The race is not being protected by his tanks the way that he needs to. Vex trying to run away from Rhino, runs right to Chronix's waiting arms. And Rhino might go down this here too, but you can see those people under the point they're fighting him and no one's getting cap time right yeah, now. Yeah, this is absurd. Not at all. Everyone no is bouncing back and forth. I don't know. <laughs> Both teams are just struggling in a, in a team deathmatch deathlock right now. Finally, Kanga get onto the point, but are immediately forced right back off. The firebomb from Uraze forces a little bit of zoning through. Evil Eye playing in the back line here. Something to keep an eye on just to make sure that he's not able to win that fight. Pacheco gets his way out of danger this time around. Just going to try to plug away some damage. Joseph's drops first, though, for Virtus Pro here. Pacheco very low. Chronix finds the shot. It's a 3v5 for Virtus Pro. I'm not sure they're going to be able to fight their way back through this one. Void Grip brings up Crunty. Battle Shout buys them some time, but Kanga by themselves, point number three. Kanga's composition is just so much better in these chaotic moments, I feel. The Furia needs that line of sight to maintain healing. You know, she's a little bit harder to dive. Genos can play really far away. He can heal you through walls. Enemy and rampage. he can. He doesn't have to be in these positions that, that Vex has to be taking. So right. as the fight keeps breaking down, not only does VP have a healer that wants a little bit of a slower pace, minus the inflame, um, you also have Tyra, who you have to be protecting, at least against the Kanga composition. Right. Where she's just going to go down. So the more chaotic it becomes, the better it is for Kanga as the fight's going. And that was chaotic. I, oh, I think yeah. I literally I, said the I word chaotic. Is, <laughs> it is there in the dictionary under the definition of chaotic. Yeah, if there was a, a Harry Potter-esque dictionary, there would be a gif of that fight playing over and over and over again. Uh, and Flame for Virtus Pro finds some nice double kill for Fischeko. Makes it three even with the last shot onto Gera. That's about as good of a start to a defense as you would hope for. Very quick charging. They just used in Flame. Already a third of the way charged. Definitely will be charged by the end of this round as long as Vex continues to find himself some damage. That's a fun ultimate to, to just kind of use liberally. I mean, knowing yeah. that the charge is so fast, you know, maybe just give us an advantage in this fight, give us an advantage in this fight, and they're doing it well. That's why the morale boost is so influential, too. Yep. It's why it's such a good pickup for Furia, because her healing cooldown is really low. So just get the morale boost, get more damage. That's one of the main reasons she's even picked because of that. So that's good. But Rhino Ooh, nice shots. comes down main, finds fish, and, and Chronix gets Vex there with the aggression. Rhino does trade for it, but I mean, that's a two for one. That's good for Kanga, especially with the cart already halfway traveled down the path. Virtus Pro getting heavily staggered out. Dosips was just trying to chase down Gera. Doesn't happen. The damage dealers for Kanga combined for a few kills of their own. It is three to two, so Kanga could end the game, to, could take the lead in this set if they're able to push this one in. Virtus Pro trying to have something to say about that. Only the support ultimates down in flame through time and space. Halfway there on one, about three quarters of the way on the other. 
as Virtus Pro start to dig in those heels. 25 seconds left. One big win of a fight here for Virtus Pro. Could spell the end. Vex did it on Frozen Guard. He's looking to do it again here. A double kill. Gara, Rhino, done for. Fischeko finds Chronix. 10 seconds left. Only Joel's is able to pull something back. And that's a clean sweep for Virtus Pro with five seconds left. I think that's going to seal it up. We got one more point seven in the books. What a great push from v by VP. The second somebody was low, everybody pounced. They, they were immediately anything. in. Didn't use a single thing. I mean, v uh, Kanga didn't use anything either. So True. It did end up balancing out, but all ultimates online for this final point fight, it really has to come down to how well they protect a raise. That Hexfire came in before. Yep. Had Cruncy been a step or two to the side and face tanked it for one more second, Boop. they would have they would have killed Rhino. And I think I think VP could have won that mid-fight, but the little things make the biggest difference. Great shot onto Gera by Fischeko there. Confirming that wasn't really necessary, but yeah. we highlighted it. You know, that was that was a marketing. Right. That was a right, VP right, right, marketing right. shot that uh, that Fischeko hit. And I think there's a few in those contracts. We'll cover up the hit. slash line afterwards, yeah. though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, what that's, a, when, that's when the, the, the snappy thing comes in. And right, then, of, you, course, you don't, of course. You don't show that. What a... Uh, it's been a wild game from Fischeko in that you have these moments where he's getting a triple kill, securing the defense from Virtus Pro. And then you look at a slash line, you're like, there's no way he's 9 and 12, but uh, he is. And you go into this final mid fight, you look for him to have a big fight here. Erase opens up with a crossfire into the back of Rhino. And that's the first pick for Virtus Pro. Everything thrown at the wall Immortal and Flame. Crossfire all used here as Virtus Pro try to retake. So low on the point now as Joel's drops the dome shield. He's able to stay alive beneath it. Evil Eye front finds Crunchy on the opposite side. Fasheko blinks in and gets a kill. But Chronix is now starting to get involved in this fight. Finds one onto Erase, and everything still hangs in the balance. Crunchy just overextends, trying to get on a little bit too much pressure. Evil Eye finds a kill onto the side onto Fasheko. Everyone's getting pushed back. Evil oh Eye my. in the perfect position through time and space to keep him trapped in, but Doe barely manages to get away. Look at that health pool though. Chronix pitches him and catches him in. No tank available to touch the point, maybe Fish will have the respawn, I mean, well, never mind, there he is. Well, disregard, <laughs> they won't have the chance to go in. Crunchy oh now my. getting farmed for some ultimate that Chronix will not need, and Kanga take that off of the back of uh, just Crunchy just getting a little too overzealous. I am, I'm eating my words as every How game goes through here. We were on the desk in the first set, and I'm thinking, yeah, our first set of the day is absolutely going to be our closest set. I mean, the way Virtus Pro are playing, there's no way they don't steamroll over Kanga. Kanga fighting back. This is the team, though, that, that beat NIP. I mean, don't forget that. The sure. last time we saw Kanga prior to the break was a big win over your contended, albeit, number one seed. That may change in our third set of the day. Navi with a chance to take that number one spot. But Warder's Gate, so competitive. This is going to be a fun one to watch. Might come down to the wire. It might. I mean, that was Kanga's one of their favorite maps. So we'll have to see how they play on the map pick. Yep, we'll true. see how they go on VP's map pick. But only one way to find out. Only one way to find out, and that's game five. But first, quick break. Skillshot, the official production partner of the Paladins Premier League.
Kangar staying alive this time around, making sure that the day continues. If you were really, really worried for some reason this morning that you just weren't going to get enough Paladins today, I think we have been giving you the medicine, I guess, that comes out of it. I mean, it's been almost nothing but four threes with a, a rare four one yeah. and the four two in between. It has always been seven points for every game. You're getting your money's worth today, folks. And I know you paid exactly nothing to be here. So, not to say that you don't get your money's worth Just saying worth the cost-effectiveness <laughs> of watching Paladins on stream is very high. Yes, sir. And uh, and this one is definitely a different tale than has been told so far. A couple of big switch-ups here with characters like Fernando. Finally Maeve poking her head out. Evil Eye having a pretty damn good game. And an impactful win for Kanga for the reason of... Rhino didn't exactly, you know, have that bulldozer like performance that he can on Ash yeah. as well as Khan, six and eleven on the Ruckus. Clearly one of the important takeaways from Virtus Pro. They finally let Fish back onto the Eevee and they kinda dealt with it. And again, Gore, not with Leon or, you know, that Strix combo or any of the more, you know, mainstream counters to Eevee. Still just letting him have it and doing a good job countering it with the impulse blast shot talent for Chronix's Cassie at 19 and seven. Yeah. Hell of a performance there. I harped on it earlier in the day that I didn't want them to just focus or to feel like it was focusing too much on Virtus Pro with the caveat that, you know, Chronix, Cassie is one of my favorite characters to see him on, man. So I, I don't have any problems with this character being picked every single game. And so far it has. This might be something that now Virtus Pro need to address because you're getting into a rhythm with this at this point, and it's starting to show 3.7 KDA in top damage. I mean, being able to bring this through, like you said, they've been hovering it, well, every single game. And unless Virtus Pro changes something, I, I just feel like he's going to continue kind of scaling upwards. I feel like, especially now that he's gotten very comfortable, very zoned in based on the aim, that's typically when these champions get even more deadly, and that's when you start to have to think about, mm -hmm. what do we do here? How do we deal with that one? Do we ban it? Do we pick it? You got to do something to just change it up and, and force him onto something different. It's a good look for Kanga, because so far Virtus Pro has kind of gotten everything that they, well, outside of Willow, they've gotten like all of the, the big win conditions that we've seen yesterday, and Kanga's found a way to beat them with yeah. a lot of their strongest picks. So there's a lot of stuff up in the air. The draft has gone so many different ways from game to game in this set already that I wonder if, you know, Virtus Pro just can't figure out what rhythm they want to get into. And it's just Kanga. Like, I mean, yesterday was the cleanest. Granted, again, caveat, SSG hadn't played in a while. Yeah. But, I mean, even going back two weeks ago, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, like this entire split, <laughs> it just feels like they've been in, in a pretty dominant position against every team they've gone against. But something about Kanga is just giving him a lot of trouble. Like, it's just the angle. That silver maybe bullet from against. down under. You never know. You'd love to see it, man. I mean, Kanga <laughs> yeah, just beat Nip. It was a long, it was a grueling set, too. Yeah. Another, you know, long seven gamer. And maybe Kanga just, uh, I love being on the Kanga background, by the way. I love this. <laughs> While I gas up the boys, <laughs> they're just having a, they're having a good moment. The, you know, when they can get into a rhythm, it's definitely a very scary team. And when they can become that wild card presence, that, Honestly, that's how they came onto the scene. They were picking Grover and Pentakilling people at the very first Invitational Tournament we ever had. So it's yeah. always been kind of in the spirit of Kanga to play, you know, some wacky stuff, hard to predict, weirder maps. It's, uh, it's, it's a fun dynamic to watch Every for sure. time they flush, even though they've moved here, it always spins the other way. You that's right. Know. That's, what it's all, that's really what it's all about. That's what they're bringing. And they brought in the flare. Maybe that's what it is, is like the time that's ticking through, they're, they're perpetually going to be – Really good, but it's only because they only have the three. Dude, I need a hoodie. You I'm need the hoodie? I'm going to hit up my boy. Hoodie? I'm going to hit up my boy, Hades. Looks like a quality-ass hoodie, too. <laughs> it's almost hoodie season, folks. Let's be real. The the true tech is the, the long sleeve hooded jerseys that end. Yeah, those on. are actually pretty sick, too. Those are I, – I would – I like those. Those are probably number one on my, like, top-tier jersey list. Mm. But uh, – Hoodies, Kanga hoodies can be nice up there. And we'll have to see if maybe those hoodies are the comfort that are driving them past Virtus Pro or if Virtus Pro is going to take the lead. Either way, it's 2 2. It's tied up once again. We're guaranteed six games. And we're going over to Ice Mines. That's right, baby. So Kanga win this the one. Hoodies. <laughs> they need to stay warm here for sure. Virtus Pro. Very good on this map. A lot of teams starting to get really good on this map. Even Strix peeking his head out. 
You're looking at combustible Drogos. There's a lot that Hanga have to be aware of. And I think it's, I don't think it's a secret either. I think it's it's a fairly straightforward thing that people are starting to pick here on Ice Mines. But the conversation has been so heavily around Beric, Inara, and Furia through the first couple of picks that if VP do this dance right, they can still get all of their, you know, their power carries probably later on in the draft because I don't know how hard Kanga is going to fight them. It's been a pretty, it's been a pretty vicious fight between Fish and Evil Eye for for Eevee and certain characters yeah. today. Both of them are great Drogos players, so expect that to be uh, in the conversation for sure. Willow takes a seat, putting an even higher focus onto Drogos for the draft to come. You're gonna have to be careful as to who gets that. I just saw Fisheko is getting an apple. He's getting his healthy snacks, and he's about to be zoned in like no other depending on what this ban comes through. I mean, Kanga could go an alternative route and try to ban away one of those high hitters, but no. Makoa being maybe too prominent in pretty much any game you give him. And even though I would say Ice Mines could argue maybe one of the stronger maps. I mean, you have to hook people out a window. Like, there's a lot of strengths to him there. Yeah. And you just don't want to let him through for either of these teams. I mean, Rhino or Joel's, Dosups or Cruncy, no matter who got him, he's just too scary. Yeah. Definitely more so for Kanga, I, I personally feel, and Makoa, very good on the point. But again, that's how you draft on Ice Mines. Nobody drafts for the push on Ice Mines. If you can get it done, you get it done. Certain characters work well, both Victor and Strix, I think work really, really well uh, on the push, as well as the payload fight up in mid. Especially when you can get right. It, it kind of sucks if you're on defense, to be on defense, because you're not winning the game. But just to be able to duck in and out of your spawn door on that little balcony with a Victor or a Strix, it's it's really just like, how do you counter that, man? Yeah. What do you do? What could you possibly do against this? We got to see a little bit of that between Envy and the Knights when they played on Ice Mines. That was a lot of fun. But with so much open, much more on the front line than we we're used to seeing. Barrack is open. Inara, Ash, Khan. Ash has been very, very overlooked this set until she was banned. Uh, I, I wonder if that'll kind that, of return to normalcy after that. And it's so weird because she was banned the one time and then not picked up the other time. Like yeah. we have seen more Con Ash today than well than some of the other combinations we had going through that first set. But they still, as Virtus Pro, opted for Fernando last game. Mm. So we'll have to see maybe. Wow. Maybe she's Incoming. long and forgotten. Wow, wow, Kanga wow. are just gonna take at anything and everything. Evil Eye seems pretty Your happy. They. Uh, to me. You know, I'm kind of down for this. Keep switching it up. Keep VP on their toes. And that's what Kanga, I think, are doing here. They're realizing, again, I said it wasn't really any secret what exactly is working on Ice Mines as of late. For a lot yeah. of teams, it is Victor. Um, but given how Raze has been on Strix today, I think he's going to be just fine on either. When you look at Victor Drogos, you, you you don't see a lot of dive, quite, quite frankly. So Strix would be safe in that regard. You, you still have to worry about an Ash here. getting in your face, and that could be uh, that could certainly be troublesome. But Rhino hasn't been le leaning himself that way either. Triple DPS not super popular on this map, so despite the sparse Ash play from Rhino today, I wouldn't be overly surprised to just to see him go that way. Well, with Anara, with Grover, with Khan, you've got your core down for VP. Kanga still able to kind of opt for it. Furia not going to be there for Virtus Pro today, or for this game specifically. Even though she's been kind of fought over, I would argue. Like, Virtus Pro yeah. has been going for her the last few, and she's been very prominent for them the last couple of days. With Gera going, maybe the other one that's been very prominent on Ice Mines. Ying. This illusory rift just, it opens so many doors that might not have been possible to fight through otherwise. So Grover, I think, is really this one of, one of his stronger maps because wherever, you know, when you're standing kind of in safety, either behind like that little Pray ice block minecart end of the path this sort of cover, you're standing cannot. over in the pocket by the tower on the, on the dangerous side of the map, or you're just standing behind the wall of the ski lodge, you can really cover a lot of your teammates there most of the time. Oh, yeah. You're also pretty tanky. You also have great ranged scaling for the push of ice mines or the defense, whatever you uh, happen to find yourself on that time around. And I think it's a good takeaway from, from Gera. I think Kanga have played a decent amount of Grover in the past. So not only you're kind of two birds, one stoning them. Eevee here, I was going to talk about her, but then I'm like, nah, nobody really picks Eevee on Ice Mines, man. You, you barely see it. Yeah. she. This is 
But it's fish, man. He just, he, he really, he, the kid really just picks what he wants. That's kind of some of the dangerousness of Virtus Pro, I guess, when it comes down to it is. Ghost feather report. Sometimes it's not a, a, a case of what's going to be good, what's meta. It's just, what do we want to play? And can we make it look good? Usually the answer is yes. They get the Strix that you were talking about kind of throughout the draft. But they do lock in the Eevee. And so she is full on confirmed here for them. And it's not a typical Ice Mines No, man. There's, there's not a lot of angles to play with. There's a lot of, um, you know, line of sight breaking damage for Kanga in Grenade and Fire Spit. Hell, if you want to throw Gord in that conversation. There's a lot of ways for this Eevee to take Poke before she goes back in. And that's hand in hand with there not being a lot of angles. There's not a lot of places for her to be. So once they figure it out, Fire Spit and Grenades are going to be flying gonna around that corner. Me. It gets Fernando as well. Eevee doesn't ne huh. necessarily synergize with Grover. Again, it feels like sometimes Fish just picks what he wants and he kind of forces it, right? Drogos on Frozen Guard. That's not something people really do. He's a hell of a player, and I'm a, it's my favorite character, so I'm open yeah. to it. Uh, there's not a lot of synergy going on elsewhere. Maybe he can follow up on a raises, you know, setup shots, or if he can hit some big flares, get him a lot of vision, and, and Fish can make very educated decisions about when to go in with what few angles he has to work with. There is ways to make it work, but it's just it's not going to be easy. Well, we're just going to have to see whether or not he can, in fact, make this one work. Kanga, once again, forget the Ash. They go the Nando. Let's see if it works. Well, it worked last time around. They'll be happy with that, at least. Another example of a Strix on Ice Mines this time around for Virtus Pro. Not the best showing last time around, but this time maybe trying to turn things uh, on a different leaf. Pacheco eating an apple there. Doctors in shambles leaving the studio, keeping him away. That's all besides the point, though. Burst mode victor for Kanga on the opposite side. A little bit of Strix on the other. You weren't super thrilled with the EV coming out. No, I, I don't know. It, it, it's going it, to... It, I don't want to say it won't work because it's Fisheko, right? Right. It might just work because it's Fisheko, but... Three. It's, it's hard for me to want to back it. I, I don't really like how hard it's going to be for her to get in and avoid damage with how close proximity this whole mid fight is. There's going to be a lot her way that she has to be able to kite right. around. And if anyone could do it, it's Fish, but there's a great comp against it. I think Victor Drogo is a fantastic yep. DPS Ooh. combination on this map. And you can already see, I mean, Fish playing all the way there on the far right, right. kind of trying to own that barn area. Zoning out a little bit, but not able to find a kill just yet. Chronix has got his hands full as well. The long-range battle between Erase on the Strix. He opens things up here. Kill on the Evil Eye. Smartly, I think, hanging out behind that wall just a little bit. Fernando gets tossed. Rhino, no ultimate just yet to save his life, but his giant health pool is going to do that. Pacheco now free and clear to control that back line. Once the Drogos is gone, Strix moves forward. I don't, th I don't know if he needed to zoom in that time around. Virtus Pro find themselves some kills, find themselves on the point, and might just find themselves point number one. I just wanted to see the fear in Joel's eyes as he, as he right. walked straight at him, but good by them, and I don't think, yeah, there's no way they can touch it this time. <sighs> Evil Eye was just, I don't think, in the best angle, especially when you know you're against a Strix. Yeah. Maybe a little bit more forward in main, kind of hugging that wall, spamming more to the right instead of sitting way back at the choke. I think he was, they were thinking more about countering Fish than they were about countering a raise, and that might be just the goal of their composition, get them so distracted by the Eevee that the actually really good character here, which is the Strix, just doesn't get the same level of attention. Things open up a little bit more for Fisheko now that you're not fighting kind of in that barn side in mid. Some nice shots there from him. You're right, though. It's hard. To, it's hard to bet against Fisheko on an Eevee. I think. I think you know. Even if on paper it's not the best pick, you always have to consider that it's going to be pretty good. Does it feel a little better to you now that they're on the payload push? Maps a little bit more open. Not so much in this specific area. But does Eevee maybe flourish just a little bit extra here on the push? I think she actually will struggle more here because sure. she has to. The whole point of Eevee is that you don't want to be using multiple cooldowns to get in onto somebody. Right. You want to use maybe a blink, shoot, blink, back, sort of if you really need to. Uh, if you're in a place where you have to do that, you have to blink sword to get on a target, which you have to with how wide that area is, it's going to be a lot harder. Overpower, though, getting rid of Evil Eye, so all that indirect damage kind of taken out in the top right. Oh. VP here just going to walk it straight in. Yeah, they only have Joel's down there on the low ground trying to keep this one from going through. Rhino is around there as well. 
Shecko, though, just playing at back behind this cart. Could drop an Ice Storm. Garasolo is trying to slither away. He's able to do so. Chronix finds the kill onto Cruncy as well. A lot of that frontline presence. Whirlwind from Vex. So they're feeling okay about fighting this at a 4v5 disadvantage. Need something to start pulling in their favor, though. And a kill onto Evil Eye is going to do just that. Joel's playing his angles right behind this box here. Ice Storm, though, is going to force him out. Not going to use the Dome Shield. Going to get dropped off here. Payload's getting ever so close. Joel's is gone. Rhino likely going to be the next to go down. Payload's going to go through. Virtus Pro up 2-0. Eevee looked great there once they got the pressure in. Because once they're, if they're locked in the choke point, it's a little bit harder for the Eevee. Yeah. But once they got in and Fish was able to kind of play on those boxes on the ground, that's when it opened up a little bit more. Being able to sit there means that a blink is more than enough to do what they need to. And Fish did an excellent job there at the end. The Nano off tank, uh, Nano main tank works pretty well, but the off tank is kind of falling off for them. Now right. Kang are going to have to rely on their ultimates a bit here. Maybe the Dragon Punch combined with the Immortal will be sure. what they need to do this. And considering oh. the only kill they have is on Chronix, uh, hopefully the ultimate that gives you an instant kill will do it for them. And clearly that's got to be what they're aiming for. I mean, Eli started on... Oh, that. no. He started morale boost. So that has to be at least somewhat of their aim. Right. Have these very decisive ultimates to win a mid-fight immediately. Going to be hard against two different 6 and 0 DPS. Yeah, 0 for, for everyone except Chronix on the opposite side. They do have five ultimates. Virtus Pro used almost everything except for Flashbang to really force that one in. Dread Serpent used right off the bat. They'll look for that to open things up. Dragon Punch flies through, does find Vex here, so the healing now gone, but Cruncy's able to kite backwards, trade out the kill onto Evil Eye. That's an instance, though, where Evil Eye might be okay because he is trading out. Rhino and Joel is able to move into that space. Force back Virtus Pro. Now Kanga with fast cap in control of the mid. Yeah, double comeback means there's almost no chance of them getting back in. And that's exactly what Kanga needed. I mean, five ultimates used immediately. They have double comeback. Absolutely no chance of that if you win the fight decisively. Right. And, I mean, those ultimates are definitely about decisive. about as decisive ways. as you yeah, can get. Exactly. I mean, Dragon Punch. Evil Eye did get traded out near the end, but he made a lot of room. That dome shield to zone everybody bought even more time for the cap. Now VP trying to take this back in. Chronix does get low, but Fish misses the follow-up and dies to Evil Eye spam. So they can take this back in. Seismic Crash might slow them down. VP, good decision to spend that ultimate. Yeah, it gets Rhino nice and locked up, but no kills on the back end of it. Evil Eye is the one who's getting his name in the column. He raises, able to pull one back onto the Dragon, but Chronix free firing in the back line on Victor. Feeling good, make it three. Make a Kanga pushing forward here. Two minutes left, 2-1 is where we stand, Virtus Pro. Looking to make it three for them. Put this one to a final potential mid-fight. Kanga looking to tie things up. Chronix gets a barrel-stuffed triple kill there. <laughs> I mean, Doe's, Doe's running it down up top. This is decent positioning by them, I feel. This is a good spot for a raise. Longer sight lines, the better. And, and Joel's is, is pressuring well. Hopefully, doesn't, for his sake, doesn't walk onto that flare. Does narrowly avoid it. And good positioning by them. Fish wants to definitely be up here so we can blink around the corner and do damage. Actually, he rotates over there to the left, trying to spam Chronix. But that longer sight line is going to make things a lot harder for him yep. than it needs to be. I mean, he's not really doing anything other than one shot and then backing up. Now he's stuck on the floor. I guess that's a decent place to start from because you can go either way. But once the ground gets taken, it's going to be way harder Ooh. to get out. It's a good fire spin, and the ground is starting to be overrun here by Kanga. Prediction there from Evil Eye, figuring. Sheko might be right there, and he was. Prunzi's done a great job of controlling this right-hand side. I mean, he's had two, sometimes three members of Kanga up there with him. He's actually able to find a kill here. He does drop down, does plug a few shots in away at Joel's, and this is where things start to open up. Virtus Pro are going to be able to fill that now vacated space, really zone out Kanga. Kind of have to be on the lookout for Evil Eye in this case, but they know right where he is. Things are stalled out with about 30 seconds left. The corner pressure makes it so they really can't follow up on him for now. He does buy enough time for his spawns to get there. And Rhino chunked down really quickly, but does make it in. And now this is, again, a huge open space for Fish to play. He can play around this corner, but if they take that little shack area on the back side with Chronix, then Fish's options are very limited. The race here, they're going to try to kill for him as well as they can. Good combustible yeah. knocks the race in, but no one's there just in time to follow up on it. Kanga, though, looks like they're starting to execute. Nice shot. No, never mind. They Kay. found him. See they ya. stopped it. Goodbye. See ya. Bye, they, Chronix. They, they know what the problem is, and they're trying to fix it. It is two for two, but I feel like VP have the massive advantage with the spawn. Definitely two for two, but one of those two is Vex, so you're not going to have very much healing on the back side. Gara now is gone as well, so Virtus Pro stalling things out over time beginning, but you're right. Spawn proximity very, very close here for Virtus Pro. Rhino drops off. That's certainly going to spell the end to this one. Pacheco, nice blink in for the double to end that round. Now, Virtus Pro, five ultimate strong. Looking to end this game. And that was a big downfall last time around. They spent everything on the, the payload push, didn't have anything for the mid, but now yeah. we're all even.
Yeah, and I don't, but I don't know if they have like the counter ultimates really. Sure. I mean, they don't have great execution ultimates other than the tank ones, right? Ice Storm, okay, but no real combo with it. Overpower, it's always going to be good. I, I yeah. don't think that you can really side against an overpower. Plasma Crash, going to be a little worse in the late game with Resilience. Whirlwind, going to be a little worse in the late game with Cauterize. So, as the fight goes on, there's no real counter to Dragon Punch Immortal. It's yeah. a dome shield. I think, other than uh, Dread Serpent, Kang could definitely have the better execution Three, ultimates two, as we head into the late one. game. Still early though, so Yara. if he <laughs> really do get the good options there, it could it could work. What what? Oh, uh, he just has full yellow build right now. Oh, one okay. of one of all of the yellow <laughs> items for for Gear up to this point. Gold, I guess. Is no, I said gold. Uh oh, well, gold either way. Yellow, gold. Take it how you will. Uh, Garrett's got it all though. Ice Storm in on a Chronix. Vesheko with the first blood in this one. Lots of that long range direct damage pressure now missing. Dragon Punch from Evil Eye is gonna look for something beautiful. Wall stops the Dragon Punch. He couldn't find any targets. Forced to peel back, Overpower does connect this time around. Off the map goes Gera. No more healing for Kanga. Fasheko free flying in those small corners. And wow, what a fight from Virtus Pro. You only have a Dread Serp and you only have a Barrage to try to retake. They just didn't change targets fast enough. I mean, he was clearly walking into the only place he could possibly survive, and they still went for the Dragon Punch on him. I, even every ultimate got value there. Even the Whirlwind, they grouped yeah. up on it. Nobody died, and now they have this super aggressive zone. Evil Light, like, they might be able to get Crunzy here, but he already bought so much time. No way for anybody to get in. Nano's gonna Rhino. try his best, but Six, body blocked by the Avara the whole time! Done! What a body block there to round that one out. Virtus Pro, some clean team fighting. They lose one mid. There's a fast iteration of Ice Mines. Virtus Pro winning game five. Now one game away from taking this set. Wow, that was so good by them at the end there. Like I, I said, their ultimates have to find more value than, than Kanga's. Mm -hmm. Kanga had the easier ones to execute, but VP. We know how they've been playing. They're playing on just another level lately. And yeah. It showed there. I mean, they immediately found the hole to get into Chronix. That's a lot of damage off the table. And that let them, with all that sure. damage gone, they could group up on the Whirlwind. They weren't going to be burned mm -hmm. through that. So perfect mid by the and, and that wall, I'm thinking back to yeah. the wall thrown up on the Dragon Punch forces Evil Eye into an awkward spot. You don't find any value out of that. If nothing else, I mean, and you, you bring this up. And it's a really good point is that, I mean, if nothing else, you at least try to trade out yeah. with a Dragon Punch. If you can find a kill and trade out, maybe you're in the lead, but not able to do so that time around. Virtus Pro win game five and put themselves one away from taking this set. Game six, right after this break. Respawn, the official gaming chair of the Paladins Premier League. Give the man a challenge and he will return promptly with a call to action. And Fasheko made that EV look pretty solid on Ice Mines. Not really the typical map that you see for it, but he made it work either way. And Kanga, when it came down to it, they had some really interesting moments, but they just weren't able to coalesce in anything greater. Right. Not a not a bad draft from them either, but it's just a, a different prioritization from what we've seen today. And a very heavy emphasis, obviously, on the Drogos and the Victor, which have been win conditions, I think, pretty blatantly uh, on Ice Mines, at least in the backline conversation. But picking that so early and allowing Virtus Pro to get this incredibly strong frontline support combination as well and still do so well with the backliners that they got later on in the draft, that's where the problem comes in. When you prioritize oh, something yeah. so heavily... Banking a little bit on that being enough to, to slow down your opponent, and it's just not. 
I think that's the that's what you have to talk about, right? That's Fischeko had the weird pick. He had the later prioritization, but it didn't stop him from going off and getting top damage on his team. I will give a little bit of credit as well. I raise, I you know saw throughout. I guess it was mainly the first round, but really just throughout the game, hitting a lot of quick scopes. That oh came yeah, through he he knows the tech exactly the way he needs to. Oh, we saw look at him. that yellow ranger. Being able to come through. Yeah, it's not all, but what is that? <laughs> Morale boost one, Kronos two, what a weird, one. What a weird build order. order. Gara just, he he wanted to move. He needed everything to be Dude, a little faster. Dude, I don't think faster. we've ever seen the, well, we've definitely never seen the Green Ranger. That's the rarest yeah. one. That's, the day someone comes into the PPL and immediately goes veteran, that's going to blow my mind. Yo, veteran's not. I think it, I think veteran. <laughs> <laughs> you had to stop. You were like, veteran's not that bad. Okay, well, you know what? I can't even. I wish that. they would. I think it could be reworked and and, and be valuable, but it, it's not bad <laughs> in a solo environment, dude. When your healer is trash and you just like need something to help you get back in the fight. Well, you know who didn't need any help getting back in the fight because their healer isn't trash. Well, it was Fusheko. It's been perfect for them. Vex being able to kind of back him up, but. I mean, a lot of the time, you didn't even have to see him figure out angles for the point fight. They were so dominant around there that you got to see the interesting angles, how he would approach the fight pretty much throughout the entire Boop. map. And it wasn't the stereotypical Eevee of, I'm going to poke in, then get out somewhere safe. He was just always aggressive. He was kind of on top of people uh, in a lot of cases, man, and keeping that pressure high. It's something that that, that kind of Zin used to do, right? He used to be able to sort of take that angle uh, to the back steps to get on the enemy's high ground and figure out where he wants to go from there. But that was definitely something that he leveraged during the point fight. And then, I mean, from some of those replays, I mean, he's got his ice staff right in the back of Fernando's head in a pretty <laughs> exposed position, right? It's not exactly like a safe poke angle, but Virtus Pro just that much in control. Yeah. And again, lower mobility, yeah, combustible Drogos is easy to hit because he's slow. Yes, he's airborne, but he's kind of a bigger character model. Uh, and Victor is just slow. I mean, Victor, you're Victor into Eevee. That's that's the matchup you hate to see if you're that Victor player. You either need to just go toe to toe and, and hope it goes well for you and do as much damage as you can because you simply cannot escape Eevee. Too much mobility on the table. Worked out. Timber Mill is the final stand yeah. for Kanga. It is win or go home. And it's weird. I mean, we're getting to the, the bottom of the barrel for the maps, right? I mean, the one that the only one that stands out hasn't been picked to me is Stone Keep because that just feels like a map we would have knocked out by now. But Timber Mill coming up first. And Kanga immediately plays some of the spice. Willow might be available, depending on how they go. Makoa might be available. This is probably one of the roughest maps to be the turtle on just because the arc of your weapon and the hooks, but he's still very potent, still very prominent. But now the onus is on VP. We draws a natural and they'll let Willow and Knessa go through. He certainly will. I'm, I'll be very curious to see where this draft goes. It feels like it's been so hard to pin down. It's gone a different way every map, which, nor you know, nor, it makes sense to a degree, but a lot of times teams start to get in a rhythm certain characters are prioritized but the priority has just been different it feels like almost every single game a lot of big picks still on the board but one that has been consistently good for both teams is Barrick. i don't hate to see him as much as i used to kanga might be looking to get evil eye back on the ev and fisheko away from it again evil eye's been good and proven good enough on it today to where uh, it's it's not as big of a deal and yeah. it doesn't feel like they're forcing it and fisheko has been good enough on it today to where it does feel like it warrants the takeaway it's uh, it's worth getting him away from but willow is just the next thing on on my hit list and that i'm worried about fisheko playing Kinesa is a great answer to it however virtus pro without strix will need to figure out something for a raise to do as well something to counter the sniper we've seen some leons on this map but she's not necessarily known to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with no. Kinesa and Strix. She just has to play a different angle. Maybe Shaolin. Shaolin. I think we've seen, you know, like Shaolin Maeve on this kind of map to, to be able to come through. Shaolin to deal with Eevee. Mm -hmm. Maeve to then deal with the Kinesa and kind of find the combat elsewhere. You can take a different path. In. Well, you said the name, and she looks like Welcome she's about to ready to appear. And locked in is Maeve. Pretty pretty backseat roll today on the or over the whole of the set, which is surprising given how you know some teams are first picking, first banning Maeve away. 
Ninjas and Pajamas, like whenever she's in that set, I mean, SSG as well, looks like that's still pretty high priority for them. Yeah. It just goes to show, and poor SSG trying to get back into the swing of things, trying to study the meta, and it just like it swings wildly different from team to team. So they got a lot of homework and a lot of catching up to do. The good news for them is they've got, well, at least one six-game set for Envy and Knights, one minimum six-game set now for VP Kanga. And, you know, you never know how much they'll learn off of uh, Na'Vi later as they still have to go through. I mean, there's still another set after this one, in case you were wondering. This game will determine whether or not Kanga do or die, sink or float. In this game, you are going to go for the Leon. Mm. They're covering no the Inara as well. And, uh, well, that's a triple deep. Yeah, this is usually a strange way to pick it as well, to, to <laughs> reveal it this early. Um, part of it is all cards on the table. It's important to get Leon for anti flank for Maeve. Um, it's a very strong pick for Fusheko, but I think Cassie Leon, just like it is for the off tanks, it is it is just as serviceable for Fusheko. Uh, and he is a DPS main, but you really do rarely see him on, you know, the Cassies and the Leons. But whenever he does find his way onto it, it is honestly Timber Mill. A lot of times is where it comes to mind for me personally. Yeah. Part of part of that is that you know Drogos is just not just not the bee's knees here, man. Here. And we say that about a lot of maps, but Fishy tries to force it. Uh, Willow is too hard to pick into snipers a lot of times, so we do need to see Fisheko. And a lot of these other Blaster players show their flexibility on a map like Timber Mill where their normal champion pool uh, just does not have the strengths it normally would. Well, they're going to be locked in. Standard composition, Maeve, Cassie, going to be coming through here for Virtus Pro. Ash finally showing her face here in yeah, the man. set. It's been a little while as, uh, well, Kanga needs some damage amp of their own, so they're hovering the Fury. I have a strong feeling that's going to get picked in. We're probably going to go into bank time here as they just discuss the beginning of the game counters any other possibilities. <laughs> Chronic's et falling asleep here. Perk up, buddy. You still got a game to play. They started, yeah. I mean, it's it's. Chronic's got. You know what it was? He got his pick first. Canessa was. <laughs> it, that's what he's playing, yeah, and so I don't then need he can the just. The rest of this guy. He I'm can just, just uh, take a little power nap before the <laughs> before we get in the game here. I think a power nap enhances your aim on the sniper. Yeah, like, man. Everybody looking a, a little bit, a little more, a little alert. deflated. I mean, we walked by, a Raze had to come out. He was getting some slurps of an energy drink just to kind of stay stay alive there for Virtus Pro. Yeah, I don't know. I uh, I have a bad feeling about this one for Kanga. I think revealing the three DPS very very early gives all of the card you get puts all your cards on the table, yeah. and v VP can make a very educated last two selections for Timber Mill. You get Furia. They yeah they but they probably saw that coming a mile away. Yeah, at that and point. And they don't look like they're they're ready to win this one, man. I'll be honest. Well, we'll have to see whether or not they can close it out. Again, it's the last chance for them. Virtus Pro finally pick up Ash. Let's see what she can do. Well, next professional diagnosis is that Kanga maybe a little bit too sluggish here for Timber Mill. Not only in game, but maybe in real life. They look to put that theory to bed, tie this series up, and force a game seven. They're going to go back to the triple DPS composition. Kresnik. But next right, they reveal triple all three of their DPSs right off the bat. Virtus Pro had a good chance to answer a little bit of that. I don't think that's necessarily the worst sure. thing be sure. because you're you're denying the DPSs that are pretty strong on this map. I mean, True. we've seen triple and quad on this map in the past, so Oh yeah, we have that, seen and, quad. <laughs> and I don't think that VP's draft has changed too much by the information coming out early. I mean, Cassie, if Cassie's running big game, that's not even like an impulse Cassie to deal with the DPSs. That's purely that tank burning to get right. rid of that Inara to force her off. So I don't know how much it changed, but all I know is that Kangar are going to have to play this very, very well if they want to do it. Inara solo tank conceptually yep. is good, but she can't really get away when she gets pressured too much. It's conceptually good because she has a whole lot of health. Yeah. And, uh, you know, in that regard... It makes some sense. You're going at it's such a heavy rain composition there. Vex caught on the boxes a little bit. First two kills for Kanga. Yeah, you're going up against the Kinesa and the Leon. You ban out the Strix. You take Kinesa. So you you got to kind of dive almost, I feel like. What, uh, f against the Kinesa? Right. I mean, it, you, the Leon and the Kinesa essentially are going to be free hanging back unless yeah. unless uh, you raise, hit some great shots, or, or Simsalo dives up and over. The map is just too wide for that. 
I, I feel like it's hard for them to get into a place where they can get unseen, you know? No, he true. just had to dash to cross just to the far side of the map. Right. And Fish trying to follow him up immediately goes down. Crunchy's doing his best, but it's just so hard to get in. It's so open. One for one on each side. Crunchy actually taking a pretty forward position, but the kills are all going towards Kanga. Yeah, I mean, they, they just cannot contest with the range that Kanga are bringing to the table right now. Chronix, I don't think, has been threatened once up on the high ground there. Take it as you like. Quick look at the slash lines if we could. I'm not sure Virtus Pro had any kills. They did. One for Erase onto Gera. Other than that, 2 0, 2 0, 2 0, 3 0 for everyone. Gera at 0 1 and 4. That's, uh, that's what Kanga need to get themselves back into this set. Top damage in the game by double for my man Chronix. Chronix's snipers in general have just been so strong. And actually, Rhino may be overextending a little bit, using the dash for some bonus damage instead of using it to get away so it gets chased down. But traded out. Garrett taking down Crunzi, going down himself. Now, it's a, it's a very slow fight, but that's going to be, I think, just a theme of this game, yeah. for sure. It's going to be very slow. A lot of teams just going for the one pick they can get. And Kanka kind of just have to bait them in. And the only real aggression they have is an evil line. Does it surprise you that Erase is playing Maeve and Fisheko is playing Kaski? Mm, no, I, I think sure. I, I, I get why I get why Erase would play would play Maeve. I think because Fisheko played Kaski on this map in the past when Hikate would play snipers, so right. it's probably just a comfort pick for him. Right. And they kind of usually, at least in those comps, they would just leave him in the mid line to dive wherever he needed to. So I, I get it. Fisheko's Kaski is still is still very yeah. It's strong. nothing to nothing to scoff at. Yeah. Fisheko, one of the best aimers in the league. It's certainly nothing that you can take for granted. Nice double kill from Rhino. Keeps the payload locked up at the moment, but gives them a great advantage where Joseph's is going to have to stay alive, and he's not able to do so. One minute left. Halfway to go for Kanga. Headhunter, the only ultimate that's down for them. Virtus Pro are going to have everything here in just a moment. They look to hold on to things right around this final corner. They're going to have a little bit of a positional advantage, but look for that triple DPS to make them uncomfortable. Double range. Right into the back of Fisheko. That's a little bit too much for him to deal with. One more air shot will do it from Evil Eye here. Not able to find it on E-Rays. Things calm down for just a moment, but inching ever closer has been this payload. And they have the positioning advantage here, too. Evil Eye actually trying to dive into a raise. Wormhole's out. Garup, he keeps going down first because he has to be peeking the Inara because the Inara needs the healing. Unlike Barrack, Inara really will need your support once her cooldowns are gone. So it's kind of forcing Gera into a bad position, making it uh, really hard for them to keep their tank alive. Rhino living good. Oof. Very little HP. Turn around. Don't didn't know he Turn around. Go. Oh, he got him. Rhino but might have been able to hang crying, back. Crying, laughing and, and face. <laughs> he didn't know. <laughs> It's just communication maybe falling off a little bit, but I mean, how do, you're not going to know the exact pixel they got a point. position. They got a point. That's what counts. They did. And they got the defense. Right. Regardless of that, maybe he just bought time. Baited, you know what that was? That was him stop, stopping Rhino from getting out of combat heals. Right. That was it. Big Throw brain. Big Thank brain you. him from there. Yeah, I just wanted to throw his life away for that. And I, I mean, Kanga's comp for this is, is pretty phenomenal. As long yeah. as they can keep their distance on the mids, it's going to be so tough for them to contest the point at all. I mean, I remember seeing this earlier in a set where there was just, it was Envy. I don't remember against who exactly. It was, I think it was NV NIP. And they just had the victor spamming the point the entire game. Yeah. And there was nothing NIP could do. They couldn't contest or anything. Even with two tanks, the overwhelming damage is keeping them off. The Leon is there to peel for Chronix, and Chronix can just free fire on the point. Doe and Kronzi really can't get anything done. Kronzi got through to the back for a minute, and it just didn't accomplish anything. Right. He just stood there. Just I'm kind of held his drink in the corner of the party like this sucks. I mean, it's, it's, music the, sucks. it's the ultimate question. But, but what do you change if you're how how do you get to Chronix? I mean, there, there's just too much I think on either end. Maybe a good assert dominance will change it around through time and space, not connecting. But already one, two of your triple DPS is down. Now your lone frontliner is gone. Now they can move forward and maybe make Chronix uncomfortable. I think the answer is going to have to be just focusing down Joel's. It's going to have to yeah. be playing on the sides, out of the sight lines, and focusing what you're being given. If you just make the fight keep going longer and longer and you get your ultimates, then you can eventually execute with that. Crunchy going very more, deep, unfortunate the he reload. didn't get the full damage. Oh, no! Great body block, but he bought so much time. They dismounted to save him, so yeah. now they probably have almost no chance to touch the objective, even with the kills. Yeah, I'm not paying attention to the mid meter, and, and you're right. It's about to expire. Virtus Pro, in the meantime, capture it. 13 health left for Rhino. But uh, all that doesn't matter. It's Virtus Pro. One successful dive. Good assert. Dominance. Got uh, got Joel's cleaned up very early on in that fight. And everything kind of cascaded from there.
Yeah, and it's it's just that playing on the side and focusing where they need to. They also had a bunch of ultimates. Uh, my originally my answer was going to be oh just through time and space chronics, but hard to do that against Knesset. It's that little speed boost when you scope in, so easy to avoid. But now what they're going to do is see they're playing inside. They're looking for what they're being given, and that's what they're going to be focusing on. You know, just anything they Ooh, can nice. get. And if Evil like gives him well, was not trying to give himself away, but does to a raise that pick is a great open. Mm. Especially with Fasheko hitting some big shots. Good void grip. Holds him up there. Right for the picking for Fasheko. Now Kanger are going to have to fight back outside of their base here. Hanging back behind that saw. This is good range for Virtus Pro to maybe push this one in. Fasheko, some good shots connecting onto Gera. No more healing. As the doors are wide open to the spawn, Rhino cleans him up. But the whole time this payload is moving just a few steps closer. If they can cascade one or two more of these kills, Certainly going to seal this one up. Evil Eye, though, trading this one back, hanging out behind his wall, is Joel, who gets Void gripped up. Vex hanging out behind on the opposite side. Fasheko cleans up one more shot onto Evil Eye. That's a double kill for the Cassie. 3-1 for Virtus Pro. As strong as Kanga looked in that first mid, they have not held their ground since. VP adapted really well, playing to that mid ground, just taking what they've been giving. They slowed down the pace significantly, and now Kanga really can't move to take that angle. I mean, yep. Chronix still hasn't died. Chronix is still top damaging by a large margin, but just making him ineffectual at finishing kills and stopping any chance for them to chase it, it is really what has kind of swung this around for VP. Ultimates, not as many as they had at the start of the last mid, but close enough to get them reasonably, I would say. Kanga, they don't have great execution either. Other than Inflame, Inflame Seismic Crash. Right. Headhunters, I think, Three, more of a defensive two, ultimate. One. Ice Storm might be able to combo it with something, but Nothing that Kanga have online to combo with it. So look for these first few kills. You brought up through time and space being a effective ultimate at setting up these fights in the right manner. You know where Chronix is going to be as far as part of the map, but you don't know right where he's going to be standing. He sniped out Gera. Let's just ignore Chronix and deal with the healer instead. The dive's now starting to fly. They can just poke down Kanga, and the rest of the dominoes will fall that way. Joel's is doing his best to poke back some damage. Chronix cleans up that kill. He raised, just needs one more volley of daggers, and Joel's will be gone as Gera is respawning, coming back from base. Good void grip. He's able to wormhole his way back out of that one. But Kanga, they're able to weather that storm. They're staying alive here. Dome shield from Doseps. It drops down and might be a last-ditch effort. He's just trying to buy his team some time. They might have the Midnight to come back in, though, once the Dome Shield's running out. Arrays maybe is holding it. Dome gets really low, but should be able to live a little bit longer. Ice Storm, Ice Storm does get it and cleanses it with that Ice Block wow. as well. So unfortunate by them, just not fast enough there on that Midnight. Communication error Vex is going to go down now, too. And double comeback means I think there's almost no chance for VP to get the retouch. Crunzy has to dash out to keep himself alive. Not enough time, I think, to get that cooldown back on the shoulder bash. Yeah, and he's, he's close, but he's just hanging out behind Chronix now. Not going to try it. Might be able to get himself a kill for his troubles. Not going to happen. Kanga, despite a, a snipe from Vex onto Gera to start that one off, were able to stall things out, get back into the fight, and find themselves a second point. Which is crazy that Joel's was able to survive, honestly, I think, yeah. without those healing. Because, because you know, like I said, it really, it really does struggle there. And some early good focus fire there gets them a couple kills. Chronix and Evil Eye trade out for two, but... VP does manage to maintain control, and I, I, I'd feel dangerous being there. Yeah, okay, yeah, get out of there, Joe. I, my tank instincts were, I had my, my spidey sense was tingling. I just what do you mean, Dosips can't duel with the Knesset from across <laughs> the entire map? It's just, I don't know, just in the valley, the valley of doom. It was, That's true. I had a little my own little mini panic thinking about what I'd be doing there, and Dose smartly gets away in time. And They're just going to hold here in cover, trying to not let Chronix get anything done, and trying to find the kills on the DPS that try to pressure them. I think Evil Eye is going to be a huge focus. Yep. They'll look to use some of the range advantage they get just for respawning back on their side of the base. Dosips drops down to try to contest this payload. That's uh, some aggressive play there from Cruncy, and that buys him only death. Outside of the ice block, waits death for Evil Eye. They're not able to find the final shot. He gets out, finds a kill on two erase nonetheless. And now Virtus Pro are down to only three members left alive. Kanga could push this advantage, and they're going to try to do just that. Vex and Fasheko, though, stall things out. Kanga, despite a good start to this fight, now on the back foot. They actually didn't miss the shots. It was just a perfect heal by Gary in time. He even got the double dagger canceled yeah. with the pounce, but... Burst damage was perfectly timed on the healing by Gera. Great by him to keep Arrays alive, but excuse me, to keep Evil Eye alive. But 
didn't amount to anything. The health pools on VP, using that natural cover to keep themselves alive, was really strong. And now Joel's a, a bit of an island here, kind of ahead of everybody, has to DR and back up. So once that once that damage reduction is down, they might be able to pounce. Yep. VP might have an opportunity to move in. Karunzi on the high ground was trying to keep tabs on Karonix, who's playing behind Evil Eye right now. He does fly in. Fasheko first to fall for Virtus Pro in this case. The respawns will be around. This will go into overtime. Kanga looking to tie it up. No points for Virtus Pro to win, but with Rhino and Gara dropping off, Joel's now the, the lone tank for Kanga. Has no healing to support him. I don't think anyone's going to be in range. I mean, you might get a touch thanks to Evil Eye. He's not going to try it. Virtus Pro, hold on. Still 3-2. to two. Still the game to win here on this next mid. Yeah, still 5 alts versus 5 alts as well. So yep. it's going to come down a lot to how they manage to use it. Vex, I think, had a great start catching Gara, getting rid of those heals, but couldn't find the kills after that. I mean, Joel's could have, if they forced out the damage reduction, Joel's could have been a very good target, but it wasn't what they ended up being able to look for. So stalwart here, using yeah. the cover to hide from, from Thronix. And Barrick has been just nuts eggs. over the last couple days. I feel like, I mean, he, he's starting now we're seeing higher picked, but you know, yesterday it was sort of the, the mid to late round draft where Barrick would come in and then just kind of bulldoze everyone, and, and Doseps is, is showing a good example of that. Third damage in the game, second on his team. I think it's as players play more Barrick yeah. as well, because Barrick was always good, good, but absolutely. never, never f as good as he is now. Right. I would say. So I think now that these players have been playing Barrick every single game, Nick for, and for Shambles, months on months, uh, they're just getting more used to it. He's looking for he's it, looking for it. He, but he knows they're looking right. for it too, because that was the scout was the start to it last time. Yep. They have the point presence, so they can take it slow Ooh. here. Rhino dealing with a raise a little bit nice. too far back by Vex, but they do still get the first pick. They find it onto Rhino, especially Rhino's been a saving grace for Kanga so much throughout this game. Gara still alive in flame as well. Chronix picking off Crunzy this time around. He rounds the corner and catches a bolt from Cassie right to the face, and down goes Gara. Erase knows that Evil Eye is somewhere over here. He has no healing. Dosef's in the meantime winning a duel with Jules. Evil Eye still lurking in the background somewhere, but he's caught out from the rest of his team once they're able to identify him. No, he does. Oh, no, that was the uh, the teleporter from Kinesa. Evil Eye so far back right now. 93% from Virtus Pro. In the meantime, Dome Shield drops down. Gara falls off yet again. No more healing from Kanga. Chronix can't show his face. Fasheko with one last shot. Virtus Pro look poised to take this game. A double kill from the Cassie might just seal it. He raised, seals things up. Make it three for Fishy and make it game for Virtus Pro. Great play by Fish there at the end, I think. Just holding in that mid ground, that's exactly what you have to do against any team if you're playing Cassie right yeah. on that map. You can't really stay up top. Your damage isn't consistent enough, but sitting right there, focusing the point when you need to, and getting the damage onto anybody who tries to take that ground on the side. Right. I mean, he was there, you could see. He was looking at Rhino, keeping him zoned in, keeping Chronic zoned in until he knew he teleported up top. So great position by him, and Evil Eye just a little bit too far back. He got the OT touches, but he had to cover so much distance to do it. He was maybe 10 HP by the time he backed up. That was a fun one to watch. I mean, not only do we get Timber Mill, which we don't always get to see, but a little triple DPS. The the early range uh, advantage from Kanga yep. really came out to play. They weren't able to convert those uh, any of those payload pushes into into points for themselves. Always getting stalled out by Virtus Pro. But but you pointed it out, and it's it's correct in that Virtus Pro adapted to this one very very oh, yeah. well. Yeah, absolutely. Just the ability to slow the game down. Hide from Chronix, who we know is on fire. Clearly, the spirit of Hakate was with them today, <laughs> helping them get the win on Timber yep. Mill. I know that would always be a favorite map of his. And when they had sure. him, it was a favorite map for the sure. snipers. I have been on the receiving end of it. Uh, <laughs> so I, and, and I was thinking about, like, Erase. I was watching him play the Strix today and, and, and just bringing up Hakate as well. I mean, that's something Hakate would play uh, as well back in the day and play it certainly very, very good. 4-2 uh, here. For Virtus Pro, they drop Kanga off to the wayside. That's only our second set of the day. One more to go. But first, let's hear what the desk is thinking. Unfortunately for Kanga, Timber Mill didn't have all that they wanted. Unfortunately, well, they were felled much like the trees that are making up the map. They just weren't able to quite bring it, although they had a phenomenal game. I think it was actually just Chronix on the Kinesa, who had a beautiful slash line throughout the entirety of it. But when it came down to it, the, just, the point control came up Virtus yeah. Pro. Yeah, it definitely comes down to more uh, than just the frags on Timber Mill and most maps, to be honest with you. But the control of the objective is, is very important and very, very delicate, given how open it is and how easily those line of sights can be abused if not controlled properly. There's a lot that goes into Timber Mill. 
Very polarizing map. You either love it or you hate it. Wowzers. Great performance from Chronix, sure, but a great one from Fischeko as well. 16 and 10. 10 and 5 for Dosups. The old 2.0 KD for a front line on Timberville. Not an easy thing to accomplish. Playing front line on these more open maps like your fish markets and your timber mills is, is definitely a fine art, and Dosups has certainly mastered that. And you have to imagine some of those skills. I, I just saw it at the very end, and unfortunately it did happen right there. 1 in 11 was Gera. And so being able to find well, a lot more consistency out of their front line than Kanga, unfortunately, were able to find out of the support that time around. And he was in it. I mean, he was he was frontlining to the full degree being up there. And we've mentioned this a lot with Barrick lately. But it, it's worth noting just, I mean, for 550 a shot, he's not hitting more often than some of the other front lines. He's not hitting harder than some of the other front lines. But he's doing more damage than you typically see out of a front line. And Dosup's just embodied that that game. Yep, you have your con very, very consistent slug as well. It's good over distance, which is very important yeah. on Timber Mill. A lot of self-sustain in case your healer can't get to you. So it's an important role to fill, and especially so in this set where it was so highly prioritized, so very much sought after. It's been a very big win condition for VP. You love to see the victory, though, when they do get the little orange man. Well, hey, you talk about the boy enough. Not Barrick, but Dosups, at least. You do, well, get to talk to him. We have him and Vex standing by to see how they're feeling after a little bit of a long one up against Kanga. That's right. A six-game set comes to a close. Vex, Dosups hanging by with us. First of all, congratulations on the big win. Big set win for you guys, and we were just chatting about it. You've now played and beaten, if we're considering uh, the first split in the PPL, mm -hmm. Uh, everyone. I'll open with a general one. Do you think you guys are playing the best Paladins out of anyone in the Premier League right now? I think currently, yeah. I think uh, our play style and our adaptations are really good. I think our drafting is... We caught up and got ahead of the meta on drafting, so I think that's where we excelled, but that's why we struggled against Kanga today. Was They did really well there. One thing I wanted to ask was about healers in that uh, earlier, the first set of the day, the Envy Night set, it was Genos kind of looking very, very strong all throughout, Furia kind of falling to the wayside. Mm -hmm. But then in your set, I felt like Furia was performing really well on both teams. Is it really just down to team preference, or does it come down just to the nitty gritty of individual champions and draft? Um, it's a mix of both. I think both champions have their strengths and weaknesses, and depending on what kind of team you are, is depending on which champion you want. Like a more, maybe more passive team takes Genos, more aggressive team takes Furia. It's, there's not much depth to it, it's just preference for the team. I think I should have taken the healer question. Because I'm the main tank. <laughs> sure. Oh, true. And we want the healer who gives the most heals to main tank all the time. Very true. That's, that's Who's that one? Hell if I know. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know. He just knows that you uh, received the healing dose. Ups, uh, Barrick has been something that I've kind of been thinking about over the last couple days. He kind of tore through a bunch of the sets yesterday. Uh, you look at the, lay, the way Lazy was performing. I wouldn't say he's, he's underappreciated, but in some of these drafts, he's kind of falling lower and lower into picks. Where do you think properly he is kind of on those frontline tier lists, if you were? I mean, there's really only two front lines on the top of the tier list right now, and uh a lot of it's map dependent. A lot of it's like which healer you have with the tank, and a lot of them, a lot of it is uh, which which person on the other team feels more comfortable on which tank. So those are the three main factors going into it. I know some of your drafts, uh, at least with what Fish plays, have been kind of interesting. Is that pre-planned things like Drogo's on Frozen Guard or or Eevee on Ice Mines? Is that a pre-planned draft, or is it more of like an in-the-moment Fish is like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm farming on Eevee. Yeah, yeah, Eevee on Ice Mines, sure. I think it's it's a lot of pre-planned stuff. We we experiment a lot in scrims. We try something weird, something here and there. We talk about something, hey, this could have been good instead. Like uh, on the Ice Mines, for instance, we haven't played the Eevee on Ice Mines, but Fisher said this would be good here. So that's kind of where it comes from. I am curious. That that brings me back to Bright Marsh. Bright Marsh. Uh, fuselage on, on Drogos. What, what was the thought process behind that? I don't even remember Fuselage on <laughs> Drogos. He went Fuselage. Uh, he... A lot I, I co it's fish. No idea. Know? It's fish echo. A lot of the stuff we pull out of our ass right at the very <laughs> end of the draft. Hey, well, it work. works. You've now yeah. uh, you've now played everyone this split. You dropped one game to the Knights in, yeah. in week one, but have since beaten everyone else in the Premier League. Congratulations to you guys. You're playing some great Paladins at the moment. Looking forward to seeing you guys back in action. We got one more set for everyone at home right after this break. Steel Series, the official peripheral provider of the Paladins Premier League. 